What is going on, everybody? What a night, what a day. Another stream, another night, of course, like always. I am coming to you guys with a great day. So I actually end up meeting up with uh, my buddy Paul. Um, Paul is one of my co-hosts of uh, the Gray Area. Wow. Just wow. This is actually the first time I actually met him in person. And that's weird for me to say that because I never met um, met him in person. It's kind of like a first time. So an event came up. Um, a new gym was opening up. So I want to check it out. So I went to him like, Yo, you want to tag along, dude? You're not too far from me. Yada, yada. He goes, I bet I'm there. So we hanged out. We had a great conversation. We grabbed a bite. Overall, I got to say, it was a fun day. But one thing I got to say, God damn, he's fucking tall. I can't he doesn't look that tall. When I looked at him, I'm like, shit. This guy was tall as shit. I hate being a short guy around. But anyway, before we get into the show, Let's go over the marketing, the best part and the worst part of the show. I say the best part of it just to yeah, break the ice a little bit. Anyway, uh, I'm streaming from two platforms, YouTube and Facebook. So hit the like and subscribe. If you're watching live, give me a shout out. And a chat. Uh, let's go with Yo Yo today. If you want to support the channel, Snapchat is in the bottom. I appreciate it. Don't have to, but I'd be appreciated if you do. So, except that, how are we all doing tonight? Like I said, I am doing extremely great because I had a great day. I had a day off. I went to, you know, uh, freaking the grand open of the new gym. Actually, the gym is called Muscle Inc. They have one in Strasbourg and Bethlehem. The Bethlehem new one is insane, I'll be honest with you. If you're looking to buy, build, and power lift and anything, High intention like that is definitely a gym to go check out. That's one of the gyms I would definitely highly recommend to go check out. Um, the guys are great. Uh, I was able to make some great, great, great contacts in there. So stay tuned because we have some things coming up our way soon. It's going to be a... How can I put this? An adventure I cannot wait to share. But I can't share yet. It's way too soon, way too. I actually have the whole situation locked in. I'm going to announce when the time comes. Don't worry. But I'm excited. And I was nervous, to be honest with you, when I started talking to these guys. It, nervous because I never done anything like this. It's different. I came out of my show. And I'm glad. So you, sh you need to come out of the show. And I had a good time. Talking to these guys. And as I'm talking to them, we exchange numbers and see what happens. The only thing I can say, can I say who it is, what it is, when it is, none of that. I can't tell. I won't share. You know the old kiss and telling? That's me. I don't kiss and tell. So you have to wait. Seriously, old joking aside, guys, like it, it's going to be some great things coming this way. The, this next couple weeks is going to be intense. So get ready. Get ready. It's going to be a great one. I just can't wait. So, let's bring in the special guest of the night. And, of course, I'm going to be talking to the only person that I need to talk to. And he is famous on the streets. We got playing his theme song, of course. Let's get him in here first. Let's play it. Let's go. Well, nice to see you again. <laughs> I know. Have we met somewhere before? Yeah, I was just <laughs> telling our audience that we actually officially met in person today, and we had yes, a great we day. Did. Yes, we did, and that was that was uh no, I had a, had a great time, you know, meeting you and uh, you know getting to know you better, and uh, no, that was that was great, and thank you for uh, lunch afterwards too. That was that was cool. You picked up the tab. I gotta get I gotta give you a prize for that. Oh, dude, it was my pleasure. At least I can do it. You drove an hour or something to come see me. At least I can do that. So from you guys know, we don't live that far, and we knew that, but we didn't know exactly. So like I said earlier before Paul came on, I a grand open in the gym came up. Um, there were some pro bodybuilders. He's a big uh, IFBB uh, professional bodybuilder fan like I am. 
I said, hey, you want to join us? And he goes, hell yeah. We had a fan with us. With us uh, Stacey was in the comments right now. She tagged her on with us. So it was like the Three Stooges going into a bodybuilding uh, show. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a great, great time, I thought. I, I had a blast with you, bro, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, no, no, that was that was good. That was good. I've been in an environment like that in a long time. I used to go up to um, Diamond Gym up in Maplewood, uh, New mm -hmm. Jersey, and uh, they would have like different contests and things like that. So you would see a lot of the IFPB uh, pros around the uh, around the gym and whatnot, and take pictures and all that. But I haven't been in that. So you're talking probably 2019, 2020. So I mean, that was just before the uh, the pandemic. So you had a lot of um, you had a lot of uh, you know. Uh, 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 you know, time lapsed and just being in that environment, just seeing the folks there. And it was definitely like, yeah, I mean, this is the, this is uh, the physical culture uh, environment. And, um, you know, so that, that's, I, I, I forgot how, you know, how crazy it can be, how, you know, just the, 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 the mindset of everyone there, the women there. I mean, I, I haven't seen like a jack, like, you know, all these women jacked up, you know, like bodybuilder, women there and, and 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 whatnot so it's like you know it doesn't matter male female it doesn't matter what your race is or you know ethnicity um you know these guys are you know those who live the iron game and we had saw guys there who i one guy I met there named danny he wasn't even a pro but he looked like a pro i mean this guy is like man you know standing there by himself he could be a uh you know a national or or, or a professional champion and he's just there. he said look i'm just there i'm just danny i'm not an ipb pro danny i'm just there just to you know, just to work out and he just lives the lifestyle and just, you know, just hearing the buzz around the room. It's like, that's why a lot of that draws a lot of people there. It's a lifestyle. It's an environment. It's a culture it is, that, it you know, I guess few, you know, really understand it. That's why, you know, I like being around it, but I never thought I was one of them because again, the, the, the condition or the, 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 uh, the dieting, the strictness of what you have to do to get to that level, you know, so, you know, that, that I give those guys all the respect in the world. Uh, for 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 committing themselves to that um, <clears throat> to such a, a discipline, when more times than not there is no prize money, there is no riches at the end of the day. I think you had asked me during the day, you know, uh, do these guys make a lot of money? And I said you're talking about like the one top one percent temp, you know, who really make money at the top. You know, when you win Mr. Olympia or you, when you win the Arnold Classic and you have your endorsements and whatnot. Yeah, I mean those guys make out, but. He's still talking to you know, the guy. He may spend 20 years trying to get his IPB pro card. And that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to make a lot of money with it. But it certainly is, it, gives a, it gives that person an opportunity, male or female, to build a brand. And they can then take it for, you know, personal training or appearances or, uh, you know, build their social media following and, you know, things of that nature. You know, certainly it creates a platform, an opportunity for you to do something, but nothing's guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of IPB bodybuilders who really don't have even the money to compete because, you know, to, to get in shape for a top flight show, you could be talking about $10,000 in, 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 in preparation for the show with everything that's involved in that. So you have to be, um, you know, uh, wise with your pennies. You have to have the right opportunities, the right people who will sponsor you. I mean, there's just a lot of things that go into being a professional bodybuilder. It's not just for everybody. But so, again, most of those people that we saw in the gym, those are just people who just love the lifestyle. These are the ones who go to the shows, you know, who support all the local uh, uh, and national shows. These are the guys who, you know, follow these guys on Instagram and, and help these guys build up. And they just like being in the environment. But it's a very unique environment. Uh, with people who are, you know, again, really dedicated to this. So, yeah, it's that was like a, a you know, flashback in time. Uh, but it's been like but it was a good been flashback. several years. You know, yeah. but I was going to say one thing about those uh, one percenters you were talking about. There are a few of them that would say they are so this close. You know, they would make it that close. It would think that one percent is like so tiny. I'm going to say the two that I know, they made it. They made a good name for themselves. Jay Cutler is the number one, the most most popular by yeah. in our generation right now. Yeah. Because but he might be as much as he is a bodybuilder. He's just as much as a businessman. Like I've yeah. seen hit Absolutely. so many of his videos and That's whatnot. That's where I was going to go with this, actually. Yeah. Because a couple years yeah. ago, I was able to meet him again. The first time I met him, he was promoting his supplement line when he first got out of Olympia and started doing that. Right. And he, if you see social media, he's always traveling. He's always promoting something, and that's mm -hmm. the same thing with Kai Green. He's always promoting mm -hmm. something. He has uh, uh, um, 
e books you can buy about working out. He has his comic right. book line. The guy's always going. You know, like yeah. That's the one percent, like you said. Yeah, and that's like always hustling. Like you know, a lot of guys think, especially with this uh, with bodybuilding, that it's just about the gym. You know, you got guys who work out. I mean, super hard, super intense, and all of that. But again, never make any money because you have to uh, know how to cultivate that into a revenue stream or revenue streams, multiple uh, sources. But again, as we talked about over lunch, you know, a lot of these guys are introverts naturally who don't necessarily, you know, like interacting with a lot of people. These are the guys who will be in the gym. They got the hoodie over their heads or their, you know, headphones. And it's just they just want, you know, they just want the solace to do what it is that they do. Um, but, you know, interacting with people, with fans, with, um, you know, uh, or potential suitors for, you know, sponsorships and whatnot, mm-hmm. you know, that's something you have to, you have to, you know, be marketable and, you know, having a personality, uh, being, you know, being a strong communicator, you know, all those things which Jay Color has um, are, are certainly va- uh, valuable in building that up. So it can't just be about, okay, just the gym. I got to go to the gym and carry your gallon of water and your supplements and, and, and just being all into it. And you can look again, phenomenal, uh, on, on, on stage, but you know, you have to bring that little extra if you want the dollars to come behind it. Cause no one's going to reward the, 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 the work in the gym, uh, primarily, you know, it's, uh, but again, can you put, can you put fans in seats? And can you want people want to buy the magazines or the subscriptions or the supplements or the, you know, whatever that's uh, uh, tied to that. Those are things that you have to uh, uh, that you, know you have to be funny? mindful you of. You see this? Yeah. Um, I remember we were working out and I turned my head and I see these bodybuilders, the I- IPB pros. I mean, the big elite ones I'm talking about. Chick Collins. Mm-hmm. Like when they were not taking pictures, they were walking around, working out. Nobody's bothering them. Like you mm-hmm. imagine them. If they're walking around the gym, people are trying to mob them. I'm thinking, like, that's what imagination I have in the head, like a movie star. To me, they're like movie it stars. It depends on – yeah. It depends on the gym. Like, there's certain – we were talking about some of those bodybuilding meccas. Mm-hmm. It's like it's understood. Like, those gyms are not made for the planet fitness type of person or the 24-hour fitness type of person. You know, so, yeah. again, there's like a there's – a, there's a understanding – that when you see a guy who's working out or whatever, no, you're not going to go over there for an autograph doing his workout. You're not going to do. I mean, like a day like today was was good because you know people are there again. They're there. You know that they're there to meet you and to schmooze around. If you get a chance to do a little workout or something, so then uh, so be it. But you know it is a bit of a circus environment. But again, it's a, it's a store opening. It's a gym opening. So, but just on a regular day to day, there's an etiquette that isn't that is uh, that is followed. In a lot of these places that you know yeah i mean the guy you can tell he's got like i say if he's got the hoodie on and his um and his ear uh his earphones and you know don't bother him at the t- or her him or her at that particular time you know that's not a time for you to uh do that maybe you know hit him on the way in or on the way out or something like that you know it's got to be a you, know, you have to kind of wait for your opportunity that's very funny so i was watching a, a while back um a document and i was a documentary a Video, I want to say, um, about uh, was it uh, Randy Orton? He was at a gym, all right. Mm-hmm. So the guy was coming up to him, bugging him, bugging him, bugging him. He came, you know, he came up fist pound. He goes, Let's do it. Um, I have my headphones on, I'm working out. Can you just leave me alone? Kevin right. Single, like the code, like the sight language, like right. yo, you know, like you know, whatever. He couldn't, like, he yeah. said it on an interview, I wouldn't care giving an autograph, I wouldn't care to you know, take on a picture. I don't care any of that, but when I'm working out, leave me the fuck alone. I'm a human being exactly. like you. Yeah. And he snapped finally. He goes, listen, dude, get the fuck out of my face before I lay you out. Mm-hmm. And I don't blame him. I would have done the same thing. If mm-hmm. I'm working out and you're bugging me, bugging me, bugging me, hey, you're grooming, you're grooming, you're grooming. I'm like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I get it, I get it, I get it. I get it. Like, as much as I, do, I don't do this for that reason, but if they ever yeah. trying to get to that point, hey, you're grooming, you're grooming. I'm like, all right, all right, guys, give me my space. Let me do my, let me train. I'll, I would mm-hmm. love to do shorts with you or a video or anything like that. You can kind of like, mm-hmm. Yo, you're getting cursed out. This is why I feel bad for these one percenters sometimes. Because I know mm-hmm. that's what they're aiming for. But think about it. They don't have any personal life. Ours, we put our lives out there on the camera right now. But seriously, mm-hmm. they have the worse than us. They're on the mics with 24 fucking seven. If they piss mm-hmm. on the wrong urinal, we're gonna know it before anybody else does. Mm-hmm. Right. Kind of feel bad. But at the same time, it is the I, I, I understand that for the most part. Like I said, I, I can I can certainly empathize with that. But it's having said that, I mean, these guys, again, this is the life that you signed up for. 
You know, if you like, like, like the guy we met today, Danny, Danny said, I'm just Danny. I'm not an IFBB pro, but I'm again, the dedication for him to look the way he looks. And even guys in the gym were my, I thought he was a pro, uh, pro. He looked like one. He just lives the lifestyle and, you know, he doesn't have those ambitions of being, you know, followed by, you know, millions of people on Instagram or, or, or what have you. So again, a guy in his situation, yeah, that's different. But again, you know, when you sign up, and that's for anybody, whether you be an entertainer, uh, 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 another sports athlete, or something like that, you sign up for you want you want the eyeballs looking at you, or buying your product, or buying your album, or buying your pictures, and and all those things for you. So with that comes a a cost. It, it, it comes with a price, and you and so you have to, like Ted DiBiase said, you know, you have to. <laughs> everyone has a price. Uh, so you have to be able to manage that um, uh, effectively, and not everyone is 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 ready for that. You know, like you've seen it with a lot of athletes in a lot of different sports, where it's like, yeah, once they're great athletes, but once the spotlight is on them, they don't uh, handle it properly. They don't handle it well, and it becomes a distraction. So, so again, it's all about what you want at the end of the day. But you know, if you want to say, okay, hey. You know, now you can follow me. Now you can love me or whatever. And then other times leave me alone. So, Not everyone's going to be understanding. Let me cut you off a second, Paul, really fast. So I looked up Danny. Um, I forgot to mention that. I wanted to, and I keep forgetting. I'm like, I, I, I forget. I have something to tell him. So um, actually, Danny is actually is an IFBB pro. But today, he just wanted to work out. He wasn't invited to be promoted or anything. He came in as Danny today. Not I, I, IFBB. Oh, so okay. Okay. I yeah. I, like He's I said, I knew, I knew. Uh, do so, you have his IG? Yes, I actually have his IG. We exchange so we can send him, keep in contact. Send him his IG then, because then I can make that correct. I thought he was a pro, and he was. I thought I thought he was just a you know. No, uh, today he, he came there as a fan. He so he's gotcha. not like the number one percenters yet. He's working to get up there. So he's yeah. sponsored by YouTube, Recon, TikTok, and some other. He was in Air Force. He's a uh, Air Force Recon. Uh, that's all it says on his Instagram. Let me find. But some more information on him right now. Give me one second. Yeah, you shoot it to me. Just shoot it to me later on, and I'll yeah. uh, I'll amend my because I made because I made comments on every picture, and the way I described him is he's just a, a you know again a physique culturist, just named Dandy. He just loves the culture. So I again I didn't know that he he wasn't, or, or I, I didn't have anything to dispute that he was. And like yeah. I said, his body was such where he could be. I mean, he could he could step on stage now and win a lot of shows just based on how he was looking. So I knew he was on something. But, um, but yeah, I mean, again, I, I can respect that also to say, you know, hey, you know, if you need your space and whatnot, I can certainly understand that. Yeah, I just sent you the information right over on your uh, thing. Okay, your, cool. Um, messenger. So, yeah, he was, when I spoke to him afterwards, you spoke to him, I kind of stuck to the side. Like, I don't want to, I want to pick his brain a little bit. And we started bullshitting a little bit. He goes, he, you know, I sit there quietly waiting for his finish his set. And some other guys were bugging him during his set. And he, he, he was not getting annoyed. He know he knew if I knew who he was. So he was working out, mm -hmm. and he knew that mm -hmm. possibility. So, and eventually, when he when he was done with his workout, he came up to me. He comes. He literally came to me for a second because I was waiting there quietly, and I think mm -hmm. he respected that a little more out of me because I'm bugging mm -hmm. him. And that's what that yeah. thing. I've been to cons. I've been to a lot of cons. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, Comic Con. I've been to like eight, nine, ten. I can't count anymore. I mean, I've been to. Right. And one thing I all them in common when you come their space. And wait for your turn respectfully. Mm -hmm. They're gonna give mm -hmm. you more time in, in return. Yeah. So that goes to anybody who's listening to this right now. If you ever go to any Comic Con or any Wizard Con, any anything, make yourself big. Take your step back. Remember, they're human beings like me and you. Wait for your turn, and we'll be respectful. They'll give you more time than those guys who dress up like Power Rangers jumping around. They like that, but they want to meet you, not mm -hmm. that. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, like I said, it's it's it, to me. Let's like say it's still it's still a fine line. I mean, like I said, you know, you, you know, you do all that, um, because you want some attention sometimes. You know, it's just, it's just a matter of you know when you can always turn that off. So like, say you go to a restaurant or something like that, and a fan notices you and they say, hey, they want an autograph or something like that. It's it's like I said, it's hit or miss. And and the crazy thing about it, like you said, it's um, you can you can be a you can be a jerk one time. Doesn't matter how many autographs you signed in the past or whatever. Like one time, you can kind of turn somebody off, and then word gets out. Okay, oh, that guy's a jerk or she's a jerk, something like that. So it's so it's a it's a um, you know it's it's tough. But some but again, some people handle things differently. Um, you know, uh, 
So uh, I'll give you a good example of that. Story of yours. Mm-hmm. A few years back, I can't remember what year it was. I met uh, J.C. David Frank, the original uh, Power Ranger, a white Power Ranger, uh, also known as Tommy Oliver. Keep mm-hmm. in mind, he was just recovering from a very serious ankle injury. So when I met him, he, I want to say he wasn't a jerk. I'll give you that, but he was kind of cold mm-hmm. offish. Like mm-hmm. he was very cocky. Like I tell him, oh, you know, the person I was with, he goes, he's a really good fan of yours. He's a huge fan. Yeah, yeah. He goes, that's what I like to hear, and that's it. That's all it was. Mm-hmm. And put like, and you know, a lot of people coming out and let you know at, before he passes. You know, he he's cocky. He's a very cocky person. And like you, what you get on TV, you were getting in real life, and it's mm-hmm. really hard to understand. And the, the, at one point, they had a shrine of his old uh, Power Rangers suit, and you had a bow to when you first came in. That was mm-hmm. like too much. So I was talking to a buddy of mine, you know, and, you know, he's not a bad person. He's very cocky. So you got to watch how you meet these people sometimes. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because yeah. sometimes when you meet your heroes, you're not going to get your hero. You're going to get a fucking dickhead. That's right. I'll give you another example. I went to another con. I met, um, shit, what is this guy's name? Um, He's from the next generation. Um, Number one. Um, Picard's oh, Frakes, Jonathan Frakes. Yes, he was a goddamn company asshole. And if he's listening to this, you're an asshole. So I try to talk to him, like, hey, I'm a fan, yada yada. He didn't look even give me eye contact. He saw mm-hmm. my autograph, he literally tossed it at me. I go, seriously? I'm like, and it came to picture time. And he goes, oh no, I don't do pictures. It's a hundred dollars for a selfie. I go, wow. seriously? And a profession mm-hmm. is 200 I went mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm good. I went to him after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He didn't even keep But as for, for some of those guys, I mean, they, they do charge that. I mean, it's it's not. Oh, yeah. Talking about Hogan that is or, a great uh, example. Or, when I went to the first, my very first Comic-Con, he wasn't there the day I went. It was on a Thursday or Friday. I can't remember so many years ago. But mm-hmm. he was a day off. So but they have posted on a big board, like a digital board pretty much, how much a celebrity uh, – um, um, charges. They usually between right. thirty to forty bucks is the um, the rate usually, right? Mm-hmm. Hogan was eighty for his autograph. Mm-hmm. I would have paid that. But what mm-hmm. pissed me off? It was an eighty with an, uh, a selfie. It was eighty, no selfie allowed, and you had to go to a professional booth for one hundred fifty get a professional picture done. Mm-hmm. When I got my professional, I only have one professional picture. It was a gift done for me. With uh, the Tommy, the right Ranger again, it was mm-hmm. forty bucks. So out the door was for uh, I paid. No, I didn't pay, but uh, be eighty bucks if I paid for both, for example. Mm-hmm. So the price are not bad. I seen some of them pay. They charge. That's one thing about like Bible. They don't charge anything. I saw Kai, mm-hmm. Kai, Kai Green at my second con, a New York Comic Con. Mm-hmm. And I knew he posted on. I was following him on Instagram, so I finally found his booth. He they usually have the autographs are downstairs in their um, um the hall of autographs they call it. And right. you be in a driver's center, you know what I'm talking about downstairs. Mm-hmm. But he was on the main floor, so I found his table. He was like booth something, oh yeah. And his guys were there. I go, excuse me. I'm like, when is he? Yeah, yeah. He's in the middle of the interview. He'll be back like in, in half hour to forty five minutes. Uh, I'm like, take a walk and come back. He goes, and it was just our bullshit. And I told him my story a little bit. Do me a favor. Tell him your story. Why? He loves to hear this. Okay, I will then. I'll, oh, by the way, how much he charges for his autograph so I don't, you know, make sure I have enough money on me? I just got here to make sure if I have got any team, I will. He goes, nothing. Come again? Nothing, he goes. He doesn't do mm. it for the money. He, and you know how expensive the Comic-Con booths are at New York? Right. They're they're up there in the thousands and more. Yeah, yeah. So it's a four little table. And... He talked to me for 45 minutes, bro. Not because he wanted to. He didn't have to. He liked mm-hmm. it. That's right. what I like when I meet celebrities. Humble people right. like that. So yeah. anyway, you want to get into the show? What do you think? Sure. So let me ask you a question. How much of a history fan are you, first of all? Um, pretty high. Um, especially, I, I think we talked about that earlier. Uh, anything so like World War Two, mm-hmm. um, the Cold War, uh, uh, Vietnam, the Nixon, especially the um, uh, the Nixon uh, years, Watergate. Uh, those are favorite um, periods of mine to uh, uh, to take a look at for sure. Yeah. So, so it's fair enough that you're also a good movie fan, correct? 
Yeah. Okay. So tonight's topic is obviously is historical movie accurate. Mm-hmm. What's your opinion? Are they accurate or not accurate? <laughs> um. I mean, there's going to be inaccuracies, I think, in every film. I agree. Uh, I think the, really the question is, obviously, there's some films that are more accurate than others. And at the same time, it's really it's about what the producer, what the director, what they're trying to convey uh, 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 in the film. Um, I'm not one of these guys that says that or necessarily that because the film has inaccuracies, it's not a good film. I have to kind of do a, a little bit of mental separation to say this might be a docudrama, for example, especially when it comes to documentaries or especially when it comes to um, uh, biogra- bi- biographical films. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're obviously they're trying to present a narrative or they're trying to tell a certain aspect because you, obviously you can't capture every aspect of a person's life within a, you know, a, a two hour or two and a half hour film. You can't capture every aspect of their lives. So the questions are, okay, well, where do you want to start? What attributes you want to elevate over others? Uh, uh, How important is it to have every single person um, uh, specifically listed? uh, Or can the person be a fictional person, but he could be like an amalgamation of several people, but had a similar agenda? Um, so, so I think there's something called, you know, there is such a thing called storytelling where you can certainly get the, the broad strokes, but then you have, you know, those who desire to have an accurate portrayal without it getting boring. I mean, this is Hollywood oftentimes, and this is about, you know, trying to obviously make money at the end of the day. It's like people don't just do pas- passion projects is to tell history. The people you also choose for history are people who you may think are compelling and you want to have an accurate um you know, you want to have a uh, 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 an entertaining way to tell their story, um, and and so that that's something that you know uh, everyone has to kind of struggle with. And I've seen some some movies that have been really off, and I've seen movies that are really good. Ironically, though, again, in a lot of instances, I enjoy them both uh, because again, that that ability to separate, you know, and say this is an interpretation or this is like a sort of like a fictional account of a bio. Um, biographical uh, person or a uh, history of an event. But if you want to really get your research in on what's going on, then yeah, a lot of, in fact, a lot of times I will, after I've seen a movie, a biographical movie or a uh, historical uh, film, oftentimes that leads me, that drives me to do research and say, okay, how I can was this film. And, and, you know, the, you know, it's like every, you just look up YouTube and look up, you know, historical inaccuracies within a certain film and then go over those. And sometimes you find the um, what was left out was, uh, you know, uh, important or, or would have, you know, certainly changed the narrative and some not so much, you know, and, you know, as far as like, the, again, the broad strokes of what you're trying to present. So so really it could be it could be hit or miss when it comes to, um, you know, uh, whether or not it's good. But again, uh with a lot of these movies, again, you're trying to tell a story, a compelling one, hopefully an accurate one. If you can, if you can do the Holy Grail and have a good movie with accuracy, then you know those are rare. But you know, it, when it when it lands, you know, you appreciate the films even more, especially once you do the research on it. I agree. I agree a lot of it because uh, so um, I use Alexander. Uh, the obviously we all know Alexander was Greek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That movie was so so off. Mm. I couldn't watch it because I know this history. To me, it was like it wasn't an entertainment. It was like I think it was Brad Pitt's worst movie ever made. Mm. The acting was bad. The everything was bad about it. But there's right. some movies like Troy. They had a lot of accuracy and a lot of things wrong. Like when Achilles finally got um, uh, the arrows in him, and towards the end of the movie, it was you know it was one in the arrow, then was five or six in his chest. That right. didn't happen in during. The historical fact there's only one arrow in his heel mm-hmm. that killed him. That was his key, that his power was in his Achilles. That's what they said. Oh, okay. Well, okay, cool. Um, like the other one, I th- it was, I found out later on some parts of it was accurate, but most of it was Hollywood. Pearl Harbor. 
Um, I'm not talking about the invent Pearl Harbor. I'm talking about the movie, the way they played yeah. it out. Mm-hmm. Now, there were some guys in Hawaiian shirts actually flying planes and shooting Japanese down. Mm-hmm. That. And we're like, get the fuck out of here, really? And I'm like, I think that was kind of cool. Like, mm-hmm. uh, and this one, you're going to respect. You know, remember the, the um, uh, what is it called? The, the, the cook, the boxer guy in a movie, and then he starts shooting people? I'm trying to remember the boxer. Yeah, in Pearl Harbor, the movie. Oh, honestly, I I don't remember Pearl Harbor that much. So you'll have to you'll have to. Um, okay, so in the beginning to... of the movie, uh, there are boxes on uh, on Arizona, U.S. U.S.S. Arizona, and mm. one of the cooks, um, he was a boxer, and mm. when Pearl Harbor happened, he ended up grabbing a firearm and shooting. They didn't teach him how to use a firearm. He got awarded, I think, the Purple Heart or something like that. He was the first mm. African American who earned a medal during World War II. Oh wow! I, okay. did, I thought that was again at first. I thought it was Hollywood, but so mm. I took my little fancy, fancy keyboard over here, started typing away, and I looked. Oh, he was actually a real person. Mm-hmm. I went, oh wow! Mm. So they use real accurate people. Mm. They just spiced it up for Hollywood. This whole story was made up, obviously. Right. Most of them didn't meet up. So my question to everybody is like, how accurate are these movies? Because sometimes it takes you a step back. Like, how important uh, is a history accuracy in a cinematic role versus a Hollywood role? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Again, I think it depend. It really depends on the. Um, it depends either on the person or the event. Like I think there's certain movies where you want to get the you want to get the 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 accuracy correct. Mm-hmm. Like for example, um, I actually went through a list of movies that I've seen and that I, that I appreciate that were very historically accurate because I think they needed to be. So for example, one of my favorite movies that I thought was very accurate and noted for such was Apollo 13. Yeah, that was a. I mean that was. But again, you're talking about a again an historical event where literally life and death hung in the balance by split decisions and technical overcoming technical issues and 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 some serious things, and so also to uh, to be fair to the families who had to endure that, um, you got you got to treat that subject matter uh, uh, carefully. You have to treat it accurately. But again, if you're talking about, like I said, a biographical sketch of someone, like I said, now I, I said some movies that really get are off, I actually enjoy. Now I love, for example, Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. Oh, Even one of though my there movies. was a what's that? One of my favorite movies, hands down. But it's not very accurate. I, comple- from the completely point the opposite of when, off accuracy. What's that? It's not accurate at all, I think. Right. But it's still a great movie. I mean, yeah. it's still, I've watched it several times. You know, I thought Jason Scott Lee, you know, just his portrayal of it, you know, again, were the, were the people correct? You know, we know his first um, uh, student, uh, his first black student, uh, they totally changed his name. There was no Jerome, um, Jerome Sprout. There was no, you know, there was just a lot of people. The, the guy who um, Robert Wagner played, who was the producer, there was no such a person uh, uh, as, as a producer. Uh, the whole thing with the Kung Fu, from what I understand, he was never really considered for it. Really, what he was going for was a series called The Warrior. That was mm-hmm. another series that was being uh, pitched that he was really up for, not Kung Fu. He was considered for it, but he was, ne- you know, but uh, um, they want to produce that they couldn't understand. So it wasn't like, oh, they promised him Kung Fu and then they took it away from him. I mean, so again, there was just a lot of inaccuracies. When he started his Wing Chun chain- training with uh, with Eat Man, uh, was much older. Well, when he uh, started, he was like a teenager, 15, 16 years old when he started to eat, man, not eight, again, as or nine as portrayed in the movie. So, again, so there were just a lot of things that were off that, again, you know, now I could have been upset about it. But, again, this was um, this the, the the motivation for the story came from Linda Lee. And she wrote this book, The, the, the Man I the, the, the Man I Knew or something like that. So this was like her opinions of of what happened the fight with wojak man didn't go down like it did in the in the uh the room with the with the uh you know the um all the head trainers and all that like again there was a lot of dramatic license they never fought in the there was a a a competition 
1964 tournament or whatever. Yeah, there wasn't a fight in the ring where he knocked, he beat him in 60 seconds. None of that stuff happened, but it was action packed. It was entertaining. It was so it was like you know, uh, like a um, like I said, like a docudrama. It it wasn't. I don't think intended to be. But as soon as I let that go, I was good with it. You know, the whole dragon mystique with the with the warrior with the sword and 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 all that. The 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 allusions to him being chased by these demons and stuff. I mean, I think a lot of that stuff was, you know, um, you know, uh, very sensationalized. But like I said, I, I appreciated uh, the artistry of the film, the soundtrack, the, the like I said, the casting. I thought a lot of that stuff was great. Um, but again, very inaccurate across the board. So, so again, you got Apollo 13 and you have Dragon the Bruce Lee story. Totally different aims, totally different objectives. As long as you wink at me and tell me, like, you know, okay, what is going to be what it is, I can get with you, you know. But as lo- but if you try to sell me something, no, this is the most accurate movie ever, and you know, I'll find holes everywhere. Then, yeah, that, then that could be, uh, then that could be problematic. So, like I said, it really depends on what you're what you're um, uh, going for. Now, movie where I, movies where I think it it doesn't land. Now I think now look I think that um, oh geez I'm having a brain freeze right now um, the 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 director producer who uh, did Nixon and uh, uh, Oliver Stone okay any Oliver Stone movie you have to take with a grain of salt I'm not saying that the guy doesn't do his research I'm not saying that the guy doesn't have points to make in terms of uh, what the public was. Um, uh, given when it comes to certain information, and so no, no. So and, and so you know, uh, uh, but again, he go he 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 goes in different directions that I think sometimes could be distracted for the movie. So if you look at JFK, if you look at Nixon, um, there's a lot to be desired there in terms of his interpretation of historical events. So in those movies, he's like, well, this is the record. This is how I see it, and this is how I'm going to say it in the film. Whether or not it's accurate or not or whatever or how speculative it is or whatever, that's to be that's to be debated. But he definitely puts out there, he's like, you know, these are the facts as I see them, and I'm going to put, I'm going to put them uh, uh, out there. So I think with Oliver Stone movies, it's hit or miss. Whether, not, whether you know, you can take it for the grain of salt, but you're definitely going to have to do your research after watching an Oliver Stone film. Even though I think he's a very good director, and he, you know, he, you know, just the way he he does his movies, you know, he's, you know, he's good at at what he does. But you better check the record um, if you really want to have an account. And again, we can, I mean, especially with the with the JFK, you know, uh, deletions and 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 you know that whole thing. And there's still there's still things we don't know about the you know that that uh, that deletion that they won't release. It's been sixty some years. And they're supposed to, there's like a Freedom of Information Act where, you know, a lot of that uh, data was, was secret that was supposed to be released so we would know what happened, but I don't think we'll ever know, you know what I mean, of, of what of what uh, really uh, happened there. So he, you know, he makes his case that, uh, you know, there was some uh, inaccuracies there that, uh, you know, and that there's been a cover-up and people have been, you know, trying to, you know, uh, um, you know, keep us in the dark for years. He he kind of goes to expose it. How true it is, I, I I don't know. But you know, definitely you have to you have to consider that when you watch a movie like this. So, so I just gave you three movies there, or three ty- types of movies yeah, yeah, yeah. where the accuracies can vary, and the intentions can also be not necessarily um, not necessarily uh, uh, mainstream. But you know, there's a there's a narrative that that person is trying to present. Yeah. So Trey. Welcome, buddy. How you going on over there, man? What's up, fellas? What's up, sir? I'm doing well, sir. Good to see oh, you. Oh, man. I'm so happy. Yeah, man. Happy Saturday. Likewise. Yeah, man, I came in late because I'm over here held hostage, being held hostage by my German Shepherd. Mm. <laughs> and she just won't stop playing. Mm. She's still a puppy, so I'm just trying to manage the chores and, you know, communication. Yeah, I uh, heard Mr. Bennett talking about y'all were talking about movies. Yeah, so the, the, right. So the question is: historical movies are they accurate? 
The historical movies? Yeah. I've always believed ever since I've been going to the movies as a kid, when America makes movies, the events have already been planned out for the most part. As far as sci-fi, sci-fi can go as far as your imagination. But as far as events that actually take place where men are manipulating the scenes, it's already scripted out before it takes place. Ooh. That's a different so, way to look at things. That's just my take. You know, as far as monster movies, you know, I don't believe in monsters. People are monsters, so ain't nothing that look like a fairy, uh, hairy beast that don't scare me. Uh, people are worse, so that's just the way I've Trey, always Trey. looked at movies. That's not nice to talk about Paul like that, man. He's right there. Come on now. Huh? <laughs> I said that was that What'd nice to talk about Paul like talking that. Talking about Paul? Yes, I'm talking about Paul. He's oh, right there. Go Grooming, you be talking so fast, man. No, nah, man, Mr. Bennett, man, he's the president of the BMB, man. You know, we, we rock, we smooth like that. You know, so, no. But just, you know, I love I love movies. As far as history movies, yeah. You know, a lot of it's scripted, man. You know, it's already take place now. As far as you know, the, as far as you know the truth, I don't even think they got the documents, man. They done burnt that up. They only go to a certain point. You know, as far as whatever president's been assassinated, who's been assassinated in America, you know, anybody, any president that was looking to equalize the playing field with the African Americans, they were both deleted. <laughs> you know, it was, a, I think it was three presidents all together that's been assassinated, but Lincoln, uh, you know, he's, he's backwards on the penny. Kennedy, where they both get shot at in the head. <laughs> Kennedy got his brains exploded but on national like TV. Like Paul said, we don't know really what happened because nothing. Nobody's going to release the information at, out of that. And even after the, uh, I mean, what's what, called the release of Freedom Act, uh, Paul? Stop it! I mean, the the the, the systematic justices and injustices did what they had to do. American uh, American people sometimes, man, we just so caught up in, you know, I don't know, just the, it seems like, I mean, some stuff, just common sense. Yeah. Uh, just, like, okay, know, here, let me ask you guys a question really fast. So one thing that I see always as a challenge is some comic challenges in filmmaking, like getting a fighting scene accurate or a scenario or something like in that case what do you guys have to say that Paul you want to go first oh sure um you know again some of these things are highly sensationalized like again another Bruce Lee film uh Birth of the Dragon uh that came out a few years ago again that that sort of myth mythical fight that happened between Wong Jack Man and Bruce Lee now some people say it only took like a few minutes and, you know, there was some questions in terms of how things went down, but that movie took it in such a direction where they're literally leaping off a of two story, you know, structures and, and doing all this crazy aerial stuff or whatever. You know, is that, you know, I mean, it doesn't look very accurate, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, from that sense. And and so you, you know, or, or just films in general. I mean, just if you want to talk about, you know, just the whole kung fu genre or whatever. Yeah, I mean they're doing things that defy gravity. So, so none of that stuff is necessarily accurate in terms of the portrayal of how how real fights go down in the street or, or or whatever. None of that stuff is really accurate either. But again, it's for entertainment. So again, like say you have on one side you have the accuracy in terms of okay sound effects, for example, punches don't sound like you know boom 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 like you know how you see in the kung fu genres and and how those. Yeah, sounds when contact sound is made almost. and things of that nature you know they, they don't really sound they don't really sound like that um guys climbing walls and 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 you know uh again doing these super leaps and things of that nature. i mean those things don't happen but but again it's just like professional wrestling you know it's like it, there has to be a suspension of disbelief if you really want to enjoy it so you got to make a you got to decision decision do you really want guys just brawling for real, like the early days of UFC or something like that, which wasn't pleasant to look at. 
do you really want that or do you want something uh that's more again more stylized more sensational in fact if you go back to the very first professional wrestling match i think that thing lasted like five hours or something like that, some crazy length of time uh uh you know for the first pro quote unquote pro wrestling match that was a, a legit shoot between two legitimate uh, uh shooters and it sold out you know stadiums and arenas and stuff but it wasn't very accurate in terms of um, it wasn't very entertaining in terms of the product you know uh because most of these guys were just on the floor on the ground like for the whole time so even them said well look you know we need to style this stylize this a little bit and come up with things that entertain the public so you have to ask yourself again what do you want now also i think there's a difference between a movie and a documentary like if you really want to be about getting the facts on the table then i think that's the space where documentaries really uh uh should be valuable to us but even we know even in some documentaries there's again there's disputes over whether or not the information was uh, uh correct and and i think as uh trey was saying there's certainly some things that we may never know uh See, about certain events because they don't want us to know back on this now. about certain events so back in the day let's say before christ and all that stuff they didn't have any documentation they couldn't write anything they didn't write nothing down so now like uh, an event happens whatever happens um like russia attacking right now that is going yes go ahead before christ they did document it was just be before after christ they changed the history they changed the truth they just rewrote okay. they just rewrote it i'll give you that that's all but what i'm trying to say is the documentation wasn't as accurate like it is now they keep it in a seal file and all that stuff great example but in egypt alexander and alexandra burned down if we if it burned out quote unquote because we don't know if it's really quite burned out it was an act for that too let's say it did burn down for argument sakes we could have got so much history out of those books we have no idea so that's hey, that is a debate that we can go on and on for lives at end what could have happened if we had better documentations back in the day mm -hmm. I'm not saying they didn't document things I, I take your word Trey they did document stuff but I don't think the documentation was as accurate like it is now, if that makes sense. Um, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I think it may actually work in reverse. I think certainly the older or the earlier the documentation is, it might be more accurate the later, the earlier it is. Okay. I think it's like that. It's like that game, like telephone. They say that game, you know, you when you play telephone, you tell somebody something, you keep telling people and telling people the change by the time you get to the 10th person, the story has changed so many times. So I think a lot of times, especially when you talk about historical events that where there's no where there was no documentation, if you're talking about going to the BC era or you know before there was printing press or video or audio or things of that nature, um, the more source material you can get from those earlier times, I think I think the better, and that leads I think to less speculation about what happened during those times versus. Um, versus later materials who where again people may have more of, a, of an agenda to change things so i think mm -hmm. when it comes to historical figures like alexander like jesus like you know pick any uh in, any historical person from antiquity for example king tut you know who are, whoever the uh, cleopatra who are, whoever the person is uh you know i think as time goes on you know i think myth tends to develop over time and makes uh, the people more mythical than what they might have uh, uh, might may have been back in the day. At least that, at least that's that's my view on it. So I think the early, the older the manuscripts or the earlier you can find information, I think that should really be the basis for which you check everything else. If you want to talk about trying to get an accurate portrayal of historical uh, historical figures, at least that's that's at least that's how I've always seen it. Yeah, I'll give you that, Trey. What do you guys say on this? I mean, you know, both of you aren't, you know, I don't know, man. I used to like, I used to love history, man, as I got into high school and read some Shakespeare and the Canterbury fairy tales and just, you know, just learned a little bit about the world and Russia, Germany, France. I used to like it. I used to want to major in it. 
Because then I start understanding a little bit more of you know, the history, of how I was manipulated in America. Just changed my views, you know. But that's why, as far as you know, like you said, the written word. Yeah, before Christ, you know, brother, brother Ben touched on. I, I believe that history is pretty much the truth of it because it was being written as it was actually happening. And then, you know, from Christ ever, things changed in the world. You know, because before that, it was just four four types of human men. And then after that, a lot of sectors came. And that's what sort of, sort of, it's almost, I don't know, man, just created a whole different dynamic in the world, you know? Accidents on the world level. Well, things that happen on the world level, I don't think it really happened as accidents. You know, it's like setting fires to history. All of a sudden, it's all gone. Now we yeah. got to rewrite it. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, ah, oh, shit. And like Brother Ben said, as far as documentaries, you know, you think about it, everybody ha is a documentary to their own life. It's just when it starts getting to a grander scale, there will be a lot of truths in it. Some things will be embellished just to make it seem more grander. Like if somebody won a high school race, uh, college race, you know what I'm saying? It was the, they can, you know, uh, make that more dramatic as far as different scenes, but it's all unique as far as um, documentaries. Uh, Muhammad Ali was good at documenting his family uh, and children when they was babies and height when he was training and talking to his brothers and mother. And going, he, he documented sort of his whole experience through being punished for not joining the draft. Mm -hmm. See, so he, he walked the streets. He didn't even isolate himself. He stayed with the people in the cities of the United States. So when I learned the vet when I was a kid, man, I just understood history for what it was. A lot of us changed. A lot of our histories changed. Which is, you know, hurts us continuously. But I think once you learn it, man, you can't never take a step back. You know, the history is what it is. It's going to continue to change they, because now the history going forward, forward, brother Bennett, for your daughters and my son, and they when they start having kids, it in the written scrolls is going to be the LGBTQ community. Mm. You know, so that's going to be a new change of history. It's going to be a little funny in the movies. You know, it's going to be a little wild in the movies. So I like a good action movie, though. I like a good cinema. Yeah, I like I like this. The splash with the things blow up and people jump out of airplanes. I like all of that mm. as far as like. I don't know. Scary movies. I stopped going to those at the theater because scary movies stopped being scary when I was a kid. Mm. But I like Jason and Freddy and Freddy Krueger. You know what I'm saying? I like that mystique. But but those are not even you know, the historical history. accurate at all. Huh? huh? Those movies are not historical accurate at all. The one a few scary movies. No, they are, no, no, but they have nothing to do with history uh, History at all. They just action type. But yeah, as far as the history but, movies, but, you know, the, the Texas Chain, the Texas Chain School Massacre, that was facts. That truly happened. Yeah, yeah, Groomy. You know why? You know why you can say that that happened? Because that was white folk, and that's black folk don't do that type of crime with a chainsaw. We don't walk around with chainsaws. And, you know, don't nobody really go on no psych. It's just they live in the country, man. Now I, I ain't mad that they did it. You know, it's that part of Texas. Texas got a lot of scary secrets, man. A lot of them. And you can find, go down Texas and find all kinds of truth documentaries where, man, you'd be like, oh, we ain't gonna find out about that. We're gonna keep that in the wraps. We ain't gonna let nobody know what happened. Like President Kennedy being taken out in Texas. So they rearranged the route, they switched the route up and everything. So, mm -hmm. so what do you think? I mean, you got to look at stuff when the facts roll out. Why you don't switch the route on the president unless it's already a threat? See, it wasn't no threat. Somebody just switched the route, mm -hmm. and it was in the out in the open. See, it made it out in the open field, like so. Ain't nothing to stop you from getting a good shot off. 
especially yeah. for the person that's pulling the trigger. So, you know, that's military tactics. That's all it is. When America wants to change the dynamic, they send military tactics in on it. That's all they do. Do it just like the military. And everything yeah. is hush hush soon after. So I, I digress. Yeah. So let me get to my next question. Filmmakers, do they have do you think they have a challenge trying to get the accuracy with the little information they do have? No, because I think for any for any director, I think again, if you talk about a major production, part of the budget is you hire historians and historical figures to get that information for you. Again, your your role as a director again is to tell the story. Mm -hmm. You know, the research that you do or the research that you pay people to do. That shouldn't be a, a hindrance. But if you're going to be given a, a big budget, $100 million to make a film, an historical film, uh, you know, it's, you know, I, I think that needs to be certainly part of your, of your process. But, you know, how much of that are you particularly responsible for? I don't I don't think so. That's why I said a guy like Oliver Stone, I think Oliver Stone kind of has, I think, a lot of his own ideas. Again, and a lot of that could be based on the on the facts as he's seen them. Like I said, the the Kennedy record is so distorted, you know, there's so much information that, you know, when they had the original, uh, what was that? Um, uh, not the Zabruder film, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, I think the Warren commission, uh, investigation, there were so many, you know, vagaries there in it that he kind of came to his own conclusions and he made a decision about the, again, the type of the film that he was going to make. He wasn't just going to make it based on what the common, uh, a, a story that was given that it was a single shooter and, and all that kind of stuff. He had his own, um, he had his own way of thinking about it. But on a film like uh, we talked about this, day, like Oppenheimer, I mean that that film has a very documented history that it doesn't take too many people to go and, and get. Um, and again, it was in fact it was so heavy on the the history. That I think it lost a lot of people. I think Oppenheimer is like a, is a type of movie where, unless you know the people involved, it's very difficult to follow because there were so many people. So it was Oppenheimer, it was Teller, it was uh, 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 Zillard, and and just all these different scientists. And then you had the uh, the guy who was the head of the military because this was mostly under a military operation. You know the the uh, the guy who. Um, uh, 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 who, 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 uh, you know, who dealt with them there, and the President Truman, and uh, you know, Einstein, and just so many. There were just so many people involved that you know it, it's such a comprehensive thing in order for them to create what they created. That uh, yeah, I, I think in that vein, I think you have to really put the resources in if you want to tell an accurate story or not. Um, so, but as far as having limitations, no, I think the limitations is based on the director. But if you if you said, look, I want to tell an accurate story, your your job is then to deliver one that is uh, that gets the message over, that gets that takes that information, takes the facts as you know them mm -hmm. and delivers them to the target audience in a way that uh, engages them. And they're either going to be entertained and or shocked or dismayed or whatever it is, but whatever direction that you go into. It's like, you know, again, what is your outcome? You want people to obviously see this film. You want people to hopefully enjoy the film, tell their friends that they need to see the film. And and, and so there's always going to be that aspect of, okay, entertainment. So again, so how much of this do we want to, we may need to tweak a little things because again, sometimes, especially when it comes to like science stuff and scientific movies and whatnot or whatever, I mean, a lot of that stuff is just boring. So you know I mean, it's 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 or it's too heady that you know it's not going to engage the general public, you know, unless you're like a, a serious science head or into physics or whatever. Like a lot of that stuff is going to be, you know, uh, over your head. Do you even know about how, for example, an atomic bomb works? I think that's important to your understanding of the film because a lot of what they talked about in the film is about how do you make an atomic bomb. So you need you need to do some research yourself in terms of how that. How that um, how that works uh, in in order to uh, in order to get them uh, you know uh, 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 people you know engage. So here's on what movies like I fell issues with. 
Do you guys remember um, The Legend of Hercules? It came out in 2000. So you right out. Two, where is it? Oh, I just had it, damn it. 2014, it came out. Um, so far. But the same year, uh, The Rock came out with Hercules. That was very accurate, believe it or not, to the history mm -hmm. books, meaning the legend of Hercules, meaning the myth, because the real Hercules was nothing like what it says with the nine tails and all that stuff. But the legend of Hercules was completely went left side. I'm like, right, but you almost, but you almost can tell from the title that it's not, it's not meant to be an accurate film. Yes. But when you say the legend near, of anything, me. the legend of Bruce Lee, the legend of whoever it is, they're already telling you that they're going to talk about some stuff that's not necessarily for historical accuracy. But again, you're entertaining myths and legends and things that are 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 given as historically accurate, but but aren't. So you're you so you're already you're already telling you showing your hand about where that where the. Um, uh, uh, where the uh, uh, the movie's gonna go? See, he, he, I, I understand what you're saying with that, but again, as a a, a Greek and a big history Greek person who loves Greek history, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like anything myth mythological. I can't sit there and say tell you, yes, you're you know 100 right because as a legend, it could be a different. They could have followed at least the nine tells all the stuff he went through, the trial, the line, like the Rock version did, but the Rock version went off, but it's mm -hmm. okay. The, the facts there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, they went on a trend for a while. Hollywood, they made two movies, you know, same title, like Hercules, for example, was one of them, that uh, came out two different movies, but two different things. Same thing as White House Down versus um, Olympus Has Fallen. Same mm -hmm. concept, but different movie. Mm -hmm. um, again, it, w it was a good movie. I personally didn't like uh, Legend of Hercules. I thought it was a horrible movie. And the reviews here show... Uh, where's the reviews? Hang on. I'll tell you what reviews was that versus... I know The Rock one did really well. Uh, it was like low. It was like two stars out of five. Isn't that... Like, that's low. Mm -hmm. Like, so... Again, even making a movie, you have to make sure you do enjoy it. It's like one of the best, you know, you, you are selling tickets. And I feel, he, you know, being accurate helps you sell it because you got the material right in your mm -hmm. hands. Simple as that. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then it goes to the next one. It goes, can a historical movies truthfully and respectfully put on big screen the true storyline that it was? Back then, the I think the answer is no. To be honest with you, mm. what do you think? Can they do it? Um, yeah. the The issue is going to be is again what you're telling is it going to be compelling to the audience? Just forget the tr forget the truth for 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 a minute. Is is the truth compelling? Again, studios they're paying you up to nine digit money. To produce a film that's going to be multiples of those nine digits. Mm -hmm. So the question is again: Is what you're what you're selling or what you're telling is that going to move people? So like I saw Napoleon uh, a, a few months back. Again, I'm not a diehard like you know on Napoleon. Like I don't know, I don't know too much about uh, that either. Be Napoleon honest. Bonaparte that much, but how accurate was it? I'm I'm sure they they hit. Some of the broad strokes. Was it completely? Uh, and again, I read some stuff afterwards. Was it completely accurate? Not necessarily. But when, especially when you have the actors involved, are is, is that is that going to be enough to drop? And I, you know, I think it did average at the box office. I don't, I don't think it made like a ton of money at the at the box office. Like, like for example, like Lincoln, for example, Daniel Day Lewis. I think that movie went, did pretty well, and it was also noted for its accuracy in terms of the, the telling on it. Uh, 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 of the film, I mean, so so really, what's that? I thought Lincoln was a great goddamn movie. To be honest with you, yeah, yeah. And again, I I think they they hit the they hit the strokes. And again, a lot of the scenes, especially when it came to the war scenes, I mean, the stuff that was gut wrenching to me was, you know, those soldiers after the wars and stuff, and they were like, you know, cutting legs off and stuff, and surgeries and whatnot, and just the suffering that these guys were going through. Um, 
you know, I mean, that's that stuff is very emotionally moving because again, they wanted to show you, I guess, the gut wrenching nature of of the what the what the toll of the Civil War was. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I think it also helps when the actors look like the characters. I agree, you know, 100%. I agree, hundred percent. You know, I mean, I, I've I've seen you know movies where they cast a person as a historical figure, and again, sometimes it doesn't work because again, you don't buy into whether or not that person was that, or you do so much makeup or so much extra, especially when it comes to, you know, I've seen some black characters. There was, a, I think, a movie Zol Saldana did about um, uh, Nina uh, uh, Nina Simone, or I think, I think her name is Nina Simone. She was, but she was like this singer back in the day. She's a very dark-skinned black American woman, very dark-skinned. And Zol Saldana got the role, but, you know, they put so much makeup on her in prosthetics that it was just hard to kind of buy it you know um and the the the, the pushback was look it should have went to like a dark-skinned black woman because part of her in her songs and in her music she talked about that you know how her being so dark-skinned affected how she was treated versus those who were fairer skin so the fact that she got the role there was a there was a lot of backlash uh uh, uh for that so 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 yeah so um I, I think that certainly, uh, again, these directors, they, they can certainly, um, the, the, well, God's, if, if they tell an accurate tale or not, it's really it's about how the audience takes it. And the way some audiences work, um, some are going to accept it and some are not, especially in this political climate that we're in. So, like, especially if you look at, like, the last few presidents that we've had, uh, any movies that they, that come out after them, you're gonna have people who are gonna love it, and you're gonna have some people who are gonna hate it, and vice versa. Because, you know, people have their favorites, or they have their uh, their uh, ways they want the stories told, or how they remember uh, their presidents, or or what have you. And those are like almost holy grails unto themselves. So. The only thing you can do as a director is just say, look, if you want to tell an accurate prepared trail of the movie and have the facts to back it up, it's like, yeah, here it is. That doesn't mean that people are going to like it or will even patronize the movie, even though the facts, because again, facts can be very inconvenient things. And as Trey was saying earlier, I think if we really knew about certain things, it would change our perception of a lot of our, of our country. That's, that's fair to say. Yeah. And 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 I and I think some of that has happened. Um, like when Vietnam was, like I said, I I, I kind of studied Vietnam. A lot of the things that we're seeing today, I think, really came out of Vietnam, because that was like the first time when people had um, severe distrust of their government. So if you look at World War II, if you look at the Korean War up to that point, America could do no wrong. And Vietnam, especially when the Pentagon Papers came out. That exposed a lot in terms of what the government was doing under the table. And that distrust with authority in general waned during that period of time. And I think that was the firestorm that let go, you know, all the things that people talk about. So the, the free love movement, the the, the, the the acceleration of the feminist movement, the civil rights movement, everything, whatever the everything that went against the 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 structure. Of the society everybody was pushing back against that at all levels and it did a lot to really divide the country at that time and that's when you had like the the silent majority versus the counterculture and the hippies and the whatever because it's like you know they were saying look we've been lied to so why should we listen to you guys when you guys aren't telling us the truth about our involvement in vietnam why this thing is happening what is going on and as history's gone on we know that vietnam was a was something that we shouldn't have got into and we know that there was there was uh, interests there that were um, that were uh, uh, self serving, and we actually, in a lot of ways, we emboldened a lot of the events that happened in Vietnam going all the way back to the forties. We enabled a lot of that stuff. So for a lot of people, they were like, "I'm out," you know. So so um, so yeah, to to tell a a, a truly historic historically accurate account of events that have gone on. You know, in a lot of ways, that could be a very perilous thing to do because, you know, of the interests of, of, of those who uh, would find such um, such content 
uh, detrimental uh, to the uh, to the culture of society. And that's an that's an area now. And again, you're Greek, so I don't know if 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 the same things uh, happened in Greece, where if someone came out with a movie about ancient Greece or something that totally uh, changed your views or opinions of uh, Greek culture or society or historical figures that are uh, uh, from Greece. I don't know how that would be perceived. So it's not just an American thing. You know? No, I don't think it's an American thing. I think it's actually a world thing. Now, if you came yeah. out of a movie saying Greece were these uh, conquerors, all of this stuff, and it, and he came to facts, I mean hardcore facts, I can see on paper or something go, not physically paper, but you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Would I take him back on the shit, you know, I'm kind of disappointed? Yeah, I'll be disappointed. I'm not going to lie to you, Paul. I will be very disappointed. But mm. I will still take it as history because I'm not that person. Right. My, you know, Greeks are not like that anymore. We moved on from that. Same right. thing as but, any but, other culture. But again, we, but we know that, uh, again, you. But I think both you and I, I think, are open in Trey, I would say, for that matter also. We're all open to, again, where the truth goes, we kind of follow it. But again, there's those sacred cows. I remember watching, um, I don't know if you remember Planet of the Apes, like the original one. Yeah, my dad was addicted to those movies. 1968. That movie dealt with that very subject of do we tell the history? So you had, like, you know, Dr. Zayas and the, the the ministry council of science and all those guys or whatever and they had you know these ideas about humans and whatnot and the bottom line at the end of the movie was he knew everything he knew that human beings were first they were the intelligent and you know something had they might not have had all the information about what happened that there was a there was a nuclear war and all that kind of stuff they didn't know all of that but they knew enough to know that humans at some point in their time were more intelligent and did more than the apes ever did. They knew that. But they felt that in the interest of preserving the society, we got to keep this hidden. We got to, you know, this this can't get out. So when they saw um when they saw um Taylor and, and the guys, oh, they're talking. Oh, we can't we can't let the society know that humans used to talk at one point in time. Now, we can't do that. So, so they, so that was that was intentionally done. The, the, you know, so the cover up was already on, uh, and and again that, but again, I think such movies like that was a result of the times. Nineteen sixty eight, again, the all the turmoil that was happening in the country at the time, and people started to challenge the authority and and what was told to them. People started challenging that for the first time, and the pushback to say, look, if we, if this gets out, that's going to Destroy our, rep, you know, faith in the nation. How can we ha ask these people to ha to trust us, to send them to war, to 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 take on these sacrifices? That when we know that the truth is something different. So so again, you know, the historical record. I mean, by and large, I mean that that's going to be challenged, like in universities and in 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 debates on college campuses and 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 things of that nature, and in in books. But trying to bring something to the to the screen that people are going to say like whoa that totally changes, I, I I can't I can't see that happening, or or somebody getting a call from a high ranking official saying you can't you can't print this film, <laughs> you can't you can't release this film because you know of the of the damage that it would do to morale. Uh, if the if if there was a film that came out about the military, for example. And about some of the things that the military does, somebody's well, going to get a hold of like that, that. If you remember, what's that? Uh, one movie came out like that during um, Iraqi Freedom, I think it was, or I can't. The, how they were taking prisoners and they were torturing them. They were terrorist mm -hmm. guys, but they were torturing right. them uh, at black sites. I can't remember the mm -hmm. name, but it was. And then, it sh and one of the guys it leaked where. But Landon was, and then they sell the seals. Then they showed the whole the woman who was uh, responsible for the CIA. She was running the whole program. She says she was telling them, torture them, put them in, you right. know, put them in a small box, let them sit there, right. throw water, do every torturable thing, thing imaginable. Like, and when mm. this leaked out, like people said, the military is actually fucking doing this, mm. and they got big but, uh, President but Bush. Rumor, but yes. rumor, check this out. Don't you know? 
No, what you're speaking to, and this is where, you know, I'll, I'll say this. American universities will never rewrite its history books. Everything that, the, you know, uh, universities, those, especially those top tier five, ten schools in America, that history and that literature is what it is. That's, that's the gold ticket. Most guys that go to those schools pretty much are in that 1% of controlling the movement of America economically, the capitalism, as far as they, because in America, the capital is the human capital. And um, as far as that regards, when I look back on, um, like even with the wars and Vietnam and stuff, <laughs> It was just all a prelude to how America shifted its, as the as America kept modernizing itself, it kept phasing the people out. You know, it was phasing the people out. They shift the factories overseas. They make a movie about somebody becoming a millionaire, <laughs> but the people are suffering. Uh, a lot of the document, as far as movies. They go to these scrolls and these old archives and get some of this information, you know, and bring it all together from around the country, different events. You know, that's so why if you think about some documentaries only make it to TV level and only ones that really make it to the movie level are the ones that speak about other countries, other nations. You know, just like they picked that up from Germany, Germany with show videos of America to all the theaters and make the people watch it. <laughs> in America, they do the same thing with those type of movies where it's other Germany and uh, other countries. Uh, it's going to be some movies about Russia, but we ain't, we ain't had a chance to really go throw down with Russia yet. So uh, as far as everything in America, everything in America is going to be shoot, pretty much if it ain't a documentary, if it's anything dealing with the federal government, more than half of it could be just false. But it's shown in the movies to make the public believe that it's true. Because you can reach a larger audience in the movie theaters than you can in the individual home. So, I don't know, man. Our history is tainted in America. I wish they would do some things to rewrite it, but... I don't know if it ever happened in my lifetime. It'll change the America dynamics. America will be the greatest country in the world for real. So, because they can rewrite history just by training everybody just within the American walls. You know, bring the innovative uh, systems back in, start training the kids in school. Shit, it'll be a whole lot of nice, good movies and documentaries out there in the world of people just. And I don't know, man. Mm. The more I talk about history, the work, the mad I get yeah. because it's like, you know what I'm saying? But what can I do? So I think, you know, Groom, I do believe it's always going to be good movies, you know. Uh, it just depends on how you look at them. You know, if it ain't, if it's a sci fi or something, I just go with the flow of the sci fi. I hope they just keep making it nice and you know, innovative, almost realistic, make it more 3D realistic, I think it'll be a better intake as far as like documentaries. I'm always, I like documentaries. I even like nature documentaries. I think some nature show documentaries I saw was some of the best. Yeah, I uh, think like they're the great. Frozen documentaries Planet. are awesome. So they're, I think documentaries you know? are a great place. Just as a movie factor, like, Okay, I'll use two good examples. And I, I'm originally use these two examples. Like I mentioned before, it was one movie that mentioned Zero Dark Thirty that went into the deep side of the CIA and all that stuff. The other mm -hmm. movie I'm going to mention because I met one of their living survivors. And if you want to go to my Facebook, you know, my personal Facebook and see it, is uh, 13 Hours, the Benghazi incident. I met Chris Tanto. And I literally had a beer with the guy. And he's telling me stories that he could not shit put in his book. And it's the stories he could not even put on film. I'm like, yeah. holy motherfucker! I'm like, my, I'm like, I was brain fucked. In the same time, it's kind of cool, I think. Uh, but anyway, I was brain fucked mostly the shit he was telling me. And, and so, like, I'm like, wow. Yeah. 
Go ahead, Tori. Yeah, ahead. but the it, floor is yours. It, it's something about you know being the person, especially when it comes to any type of war documentary, uh, and you're the person that actually had to be a hero in a sense, because heroes in the actual war, those are not scripted. Those just happen to take place. And if you're actually a hero in the war, and then they say they're going to make a movie out of it, and pretty much you notice they usually wait to the person's been gone for a while and sort of like their family, and they don't, because they don't put you back in their face, yeah. in a sense. You know, when it comes to movie about, and this is what I don't like about American uh, movie culture is that when it comes to movies about uh, crime and uh, disparity, it only focuses on the black people. So that's where I, I always have a problem with because th they don't show the movies of young people graduating high school at age 10 and having the brains of a doctor and a lawyer and not giving them that opportunity. I think that'll just change the American dynamic within itself. Now, Trey, let me ask you a question saying, here. And this is a legit question yes. for both of you, actually. The movie uh, Red Tails, did you guys think it was mm -hmm. accurate? Did you like it? Or do you think it was a some of it was accurate. culture? I thought some of I, I like that type of stuff because it showed black men working together for a greater cause. Think about it. We was fighting for America. And when they look at the true history of it, what they were actually able to document based off soldiers themselves, you got to believe that because their numbers outdid any white regiment in the history of our battle. So, you know, that's unprecedented. That's unprecedented. I'm telling you that the numbers, the it's like they was undefeated. They never lost a plane and all they escorts, you know? So it's, it's, the, it's the greatest ever. And they use secondhand equipment, you know? But that stuff should be started and taught in high school. Middle, it go, I take it to sixth grade, start teaching that. Mm. Start teaching that innovative because that's, that's electrical, electrical engineers, mechanical engineering. And, aeronautics, aeronautics, however you pronounce it, and fucking that's AI, that's all that. Mm -hmm. But if they was a teacher, I'm telling you, America would be 10 times greater. And that's to the boys and the girls, right. the men and the women. They shouldn't be. Now, when it comes to a word, since I, and with the gender equality, hey, if a woman got to get out there, want to get out there in the sun and cut some grass and climb a tree, let her do it. There's a, there's a, at this point, it's about whoever wants to get the job done. So for my for friends that America I know, that, the friends of mine that I know that came out of the service recently, I know you've been out. Uh, when were you discharged, uh, Trey? I was discharged in 97. 97. So it's been a while. So the one movie everybody's been telling me, I saw most of it. I didn't get a chance to finish it, but I need to get back to watch it, actually. Uh, it's the Outpost. Everybody who was told me who was recent in the military that came out, it's goddamn pretty accurate. Like I say, like 75% accurate. How is in the service today? I know you've mm -hmm. been out for a while, Trey. So it, it says this how it yeah. is literally. Go ahead. Well, no, I was just going to ask. Okay, so what is the premise of the movie? Um, it's pretty much about outposts. Uh, either, I can't remember if it was Iraq or Afghanistan. They're you know posted out there, and it's based on a true story. Again, I didn't watch. I just watched literally 10 minutes of it at the beginning. I didn't get into so to it too much. So they came under, they came, they came under fire. Yeah, uh, so the title, is, uh, here's the prescription it says, is uh, Outpost is based on a true story, uh, beginning as a bestseller book by uh, Jonas Jake, uh, trapped in a comeback based of a true story of a small team of United States soldiers standing in Afghan, dozen of men uh, battled a hundred uh, of Taliban fighters. That That's all it is. Okay. Had. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, now, see something like that? That makes it great because the guy was there. He was had to shoot. He was shooting and writing about his experience at the same time. Same thing. Same thing see? with Thirteen Hours. That Chris Tonto was there on. He right. was killing. Right. Go ahead. Right. But now, based and on now, listen what, are good. now listen what, what was said though. It's again, if um, if if in the title or if in the description or the trailer, if it says based on a based true story. On, yeah. They're already telling you half of the stuff in there isn't true. 
Mm-hmm. But it's based on so like Red Tails to answer your previous question about Red Tails, it wasn't very accurate in that there was no historical figures in the film. Mm-hmm. All of the pilots, right. all the no generals, none of those were real people in history. Now, when the movie was made, they consulted with living Red Tails. They they consulted with those men to know about okay, what was that? What was the atmosphere like? What was your experience? The things you had to go through and things like that. They they they, they were consultants on the film. But they weren't trying to tell the story through the eyes of those who actually served in the in the in the regiment. So a lot of the right. battles, a lot of the stories, yes, did they do bomber escort? Yes, they did. Where they tasked with making sure they got the target rather than chasing after uh, 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 fighter uh, Nazi fighter pilots. Uh, yes, they did. They they held off and they they were very good at again making sure that the planes got to the uh, target and back. That is the accurate thing that they told that they said in the story. Everything else in the film, the 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 soldier going with the Italian woman and all that, we don't know if that look, yeah. it could have happened. Yes, I mean, there's obviously there's Italian war brides and all that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah, yeah we that's, knew guys got, that's yeah. accurate, but is that particular one accurate? I, I have no idea. So again, it's, no, but, it's very it's very much a story based yeah. on historical facts that yes, you did have this 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 regiment of black fighter pilots. That's where the accuracy right. kind of goes off, right? No, and everything else is just the story right. of the of the no. uh, right. Now, the only no. question I have behind that, as two uh, respectful men yeah, I know right. in that culture, yeah. it's when they, you know, when, in one part of the scene, you know, they had the Germans Club, you know, on it was a white Germans Club back then and a black Germans Club. And right. at one point towards the end of the movie, he goes, where are you guys going? You guys get your asses in here having drinks with us. They just saved their asses. Yeah. And they were right. all in one. And people were looking at, wow, blacks and whites are together. Obviously, I didn't live in back that generation. And I was mm-hmm. saying, like, to me, having a, 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 like, even today, me and Paul were having lunch together. Well, like, to me, it was just having a, a friend of me. Now, yeah. watching back to that movie, do you think that scene could have been accurate? It could have. It could have been. Now, was it accurate on the on the on the main no because again the 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 military was segregated until after 1945 so that wasn't going to be the regular where blacks in a in uh interface with white in any regiment of the military at all navy air force uh uh uh, army uh they didn't integrate until post 45 so 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 yeah, but could it have happened? There were occasions where it's like, hey, you guys, you know, saved our lives here. Have a drink with us. That might have happened on occasion, but it wasn't like, you know, that that was the norm. So so again, so but in that but still in 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 telling that, though, you know. Does it hurt the film that it showed it? I don't I don't think it does. I think you know, it so so when you talk about so when you talk about, you know, accuracy. Again, did they get the dates right? And again, that 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 depends on if that's the film you want to tell. Like I said, Red Tails wasn't meant to be a historically accurate film. It was meant to tell a story within a context of the accurate information that these guys were pilots. But what they the story that they chose to tell, you know, it could go in a lot of it, it could go in a lot of different directions. But films, like I said, like Oppenheimer, I'll I'll, I'll keep that as like the highest or Apollo thirteen. I'll keep those two films as the highlight because, again, you're dealing with science. So the fact that you're dealing with science, you have to be accurate um, or, or there has to be a greater emphasis on accuracy for it to be believed. If you talk about scientists and science theory and how these things come into being and how do you get uh, astronauts to the moon and back, you better be telling some accurate stuff because, again, the sacrifices that these guys have to make in order to do their jobs. You've had Apollo, uh, 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 uh pilots that have died in the service of, uh, before, uh, before Apollo, I think Apollo nine, uh, those guys died on the, on the pad. They were burnt out. So, I so that. again, yeah, I for, reading that. that. Yeah. So for those guys, we move forward, I want to make one comment yeah. and you back, get back to that. But what you were saying, Paul, sure. how you thought, um, uh, with the red tails that the squad was, uh, a, t- a squad, the squad was, was, Disassembled in 2011. That's how long mm-hmm. that squad has been around. So, mm-hmm. just one little fun fact for everybody. So go, so go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so again, when you're talking about uh, things that require uh, um, sensitivity to again those who sacrifice for that program, 
yeah, it 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 it's it honors not only the memory of those who got back in Apollo 13, but also all the Apollo pilots that and the space program in general up to that point. Um, you know, you have to, you know, you have to be able to um uh land land that plane. Now again, another movie uh that was around the, the space program, again, hidden figures. Now again, for the most part, was it accurate? I mean, the, the women involved were actual women. In fact, they were actually honored. I think Katherine Johnson, she got the uh, uh, Medal of Freedom from uh, during the Obama years. So again, a lot of that movie was 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 accurate in terms of their involvement in helping get the first guy into space and back. But a lot of the drama scenes, the scenes that you remember, the scene with her, the woman going um, having a um, uh, 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 have the speech about yeah, I got a. Ha-. They had separate coffee machines. So they're all working in the same room, but they had separate coffee machines. That's how segregated it was. You know, so 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 you know, a lot of the story was focused in on those kind of those kind of of, of uh, challenges that these women had to go through. Did they get it maybe seventy percent accurate? Probably or at least enough to where Catherine Johnson wasn't offended by um, the events that happened. A lot of the people who were also in the movie, like Kevin Costner's character. I don't think he was a real person in the movie. But he was a head of obviously the NASA program or whatever at that time, or it might have been a combination of people. So again, Kevin Costner's character was probably an amalgamation of several people in leadership that had to deal with the um uh uh, uh you know the integration of these women into uh the, the the Apollo space program and getting them ready for you know uh, uh the work that was uh that was ahead. So again, you you so you have um, people who oftentimes play with those narratives in terms of yeah, based on based on uh, true events, you know. So what's true? The three women, yes, they were instrumental in the not only the space program, they were in, also instrumental in uh, they uh, the the first IBM computer, the IBM three hundred and sixty. Black women programmed that thing. That is true. That is accurate. All the stuff about the racism that they deal with, the bosses that they had were racist towards them and all that kind of stuff. Did they use the actual names of people? Because, again, what person would want their story told that, yes, I was a racist in, 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 in this film? Nobody. Exactly. So, But we know the racism was there, so we'll create John Doe and Jane Doe as the racist um, – uh, uh, adversaries in the film where they real people know, but did racism happen? Yes. So, so, so I think again, did racism exist? Yes, but, but, but were those people real? Probably not. And that's happened in a lot of movies also because again, certain people, you know, you come out, especially when you talk about character stuff. I mean, some people get sued. Unless oh, you yeah, can I, prove... I, I've heard stories about some people, you know, soon because he's not getting permission to use a name or some kind of something. Like that. Right, or or that they're simply portrayed in a negative light. Yeah. And they're like, look, you know, I'm getting heat. I'm getting people giving me death threats or I'm giving, you know, I'm getting all this static saying, hey, you were this person or whatever. It's like, no, you know, what, what are you talking about? Now, again, whether that person's lying or not, we don't, you know, unless you have documented. Well, yeah. Go, well, go ahead, Trey. In reference, to, in reference to the military, every character is already documented. Now, as far as the every character, every position in the military is already registered. So I get what you're saying as far as that, but as far as going through that logistics, all that's already sort of everybody's calculated, already documented on the ledger, on the like when they like they like in the movie in Vegas. They had to show their ID. Everybody had to show ID getting on base. You couldn't just roll around. Whether you was a supervisor, because those they were civilians. All civilians have to have an ID because they'll pull right. that, they'll ask you for that ID at any second. Right. But like his character and the boss, the boss, that's how I rolled in the military, especially when you civilian, because they out because you see how they kept going in the room with all the Four, four armed forces or three armed forces. Yeah. And they talk about it. Then they report to the president. So he ran the facility. 
you know, that's why he was sort of off hands than the other guy that was under him. He like, I'm running the facility. Everything got to be functioning. And that's why, yeah, so his role and character, those are real people that actually did those jobs. But that's working on a federal level. Yeah. Right. So, well, I don't know. Like the cop, the Costa character. I, I'm not sure. Like, did he go when yeah. she explained that she had to use a bathroom a mile away from the base? Did he actually go with his jacket, well, ha- you know, with his hammer, and take that sign? Well, well, that, I don't know if that's that, 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 that's the embellishment of the movie. That brings. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm saying. Ooh, yeah. See what see what they did. They did all that. Well, he could be said, take this. <coughs> excuse me. Take that shit down tomorrow. You know, but yeah. So yeah, but a lot so, of that stuff. But it's crazy if you look at it. Hang on, hang on a second, Trey. Listen, go finish it. Finish your sentence. Let me jump in. Okay, go ahead. All right. So the only only thing I say about even that movie right there, and I'm sure it's thousands or more that they would never go look at opening up. Why couldn't that movie be told? Shit, I don't know. 10 years after, 20 years after. Why couldn't it be at least written and placed in the history books? 10, 20 years, 30 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's just me. That was that was America, that was one of a, America's greatest historical accomplishments in the history of America, sending a space shuttle to the moon. And they made heroes out of those that just drove the little rocket. That ain't shit once you're up there. The people that send it up are that's greater feat. In fact, that yeah. a woman did that calculate that shit in a woman. She didn't even have a calculator. She did that shit in her head. Right. God damn. That's one of so, the greatest American stories of all time. Yeah. So if what you I was look at it, but that, why wouldn't that show thirty years ago? So uh, what I was going to say to that was, um, from what you're like, Paul said th- Apollo thirteen from top twenty movies is in sixth place to, from today's you know uh, twenty three. Uh, best historical movies. There's some other ones in there. In fact, like uh, Hacksaw Rider, uh, for example, Braveheart, and all that stuff. So, right. you know, get a sixth place in from all the top one. And I, I don't personally agree with this uh, list too much because some of them are movies that they're higher than I think they should have been. Like Catch Me right. If You Can is number one uh, historical accuracy movie right now. Mm. I personally think it should be lower than the list. Personal opinion. Right. But as a movie, Apollo 13, I think it was one of the – I think it's Apollo 13 should be in second place, first or second, my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. Again, that is – I think – I'm going to agree with you, Paul. I think it was one of the best movies out, out there, how accurate yeah. and everything. Now, right. with, it comes down to historical or military stuff. It's, some of them, you, you trade that gray line from f- fiction to reality very well. And – as a, as somebody who's not been there, me and you were not there, for example, oh Trey, and we don't know what to believe sometimes, right? And that's why we do our research sometimes. Right so now, all right now, now let me ask you again. Go I ahead. made the point earlier. Again, there have been movies that are have been uh, very very well received, whether or not how accurate or not, you know, that's to be debated. Now, what do you personally think of Three Hundred? 300 was not accurate at all, first of all. Okay. But, I tell you, but, but did you enjoy the film, though? I, I did. I did. Now, how many but, times have you seen it? <laughs> too many times. Dude, it's part of my theme song here. That's what I'm saying. That's that's... Hey, hang on. Hang the wrong button. This nah, that's is Super Mario. Bro. That's Super Mario. Off. Right. Don't make so, me so get the helmet, I'm boy. Saying, Do so, not so make again, me give so it a helmet. Get... Don't make me get up. Do I need to get it? Do I want me to get it? What's that? Want me to get the helmet? Want me to get the helmet? <laughs> if you want to I'm just saying here's a movie that talk about the Spartans the theme of your show the Spartans and you know the movie is inaccurate in so many different ways even the guy at the end was he 9 feet tall or something like that the, no um... no so hang, hang, hang let me clear something that like most people don't know the guy who wrote 300's wanted a uh, Frank something I can't remember the name of him a hard I'm going to look it up right now as I'm talking to you guys. He wrote a co- he got aspired by 300s. And with the 300s, he wrote a comic book series called The 300 based off the, the Spartan 300s. But what I, what I say what what did I say earlier though? 
anytime you see in the title based on a true story or based, based on, on something there. you already know that they're going to embellish it just when they, when you see those, that title it, it, the, the gig is up at that point but in, in the movie they never say based on a true story in the movie But they say it's based on it, or they don't. No, they never did. They never did it once in the whole film. They never said based on true story. The writer made a comic book off the real life story. Mm-hmm. Three hundred is based off a comic book from mm-hmm. Dark Horse, mm-hmm. and it was Frank Miller. That's who wrote it. Frank Miller and uh, Lynn Valor, who wrote uh, mm-hmm. Three Hundred: The Rise of the Empire, for mm-hmm. both movies, and right. they're both from uh, Dark Horse Comics. And he got the idea. From the 300 based on true story, and he said, "I'm not copying the story. I am giving him my version in my in my manual world mm-hmm. because he really respects the Greek culture that much. Death and the Spartans. Right. Right. Okay, I can take that. Is it accurate? Absolutely not. I know Greeks who will are disgusted about that movie. I go, it's a movie, guys. <laughs> I don't get I don't get upset about stuff like that. I really don't. Even with, uh, Alexander, I love the story. He's one of my favorite historical characters." The movies is horrible. The Alexander the Great was the mm-hmm. most worst movie I ever seen in my life. I was like getting burned that shit out of my memory. How bad it was. All right, so let me ask you. You might have answered this already, but so what? As far as dealing with Greek culture or mm-hmm. the Spartans or whatever, what is, in your opinion, the most accurate portrayal of ancient Greece that that you that that you have seen? Uh, to date, I would probably say Troy. Mm. Troy was the most accurate one, in my opinion. And the one it was, I want to say, uh, can't really say accurate, but they, they played him as when The Rock played Hercules, the mm. way they had him, a big bulky guy, dark skin guy. That's how they were back in the day. But it wasn't as accurate either. So I would say Troy was the most accurate one as uniforms, gear, the way they lived, the way they fought, the way they burned the dead, the way they prayed to their gods. Mm-hmm. Pretty accurate. There were some things not accurate. The way they, you know, there were this again, history says the way they came out of the horse was only from the bottom. And then it wasn't like departments here and there. That's one I can't off my head. The other one, the one that he got shot in the arrow, he only got shot once and that finished him off because he was wounded from other strikes. In the movie, he got shot three or four times with arrow before he stopped. The one I don't remember off my head right now. Mm-hmm. Is the sword the the sword of Troy? Uh, Troy if that was an actual thing, he that was passed down to another mm-hmm. Troy. That one I'm gonna give him a pass on because I don't remember that. But uh, right. he- Helen, yeah, that's that's how the war started. He d- dude was chasing tail. He picked up the wrong tail, and the war broke out. Mm-hmm. And they were fi- mm-hmm. trying to find an excuse to go to war with Troy because that's the only. Uh, Guess country at a time that Greece wasn't a part. It was a part of Greece, but it wasn't. It's like America with Puerto Rico. They're part of America, but they're not really yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Right. And they were trying to get them. You know, if you if we break the walls down, now we're the kings of that country. This part of Greece. They couldn't break those walls down, but when they found a way to get into the city, things changed, and you saw how the outcome was in the movie. Mm. So gotcha. I know I have a Greek brother in the chat. So if he if I'm wrong, please let me know, dude. But right. again, I think it was the most accurate one. Um, they're right. all the older, their older one movies like the Spawns of Three Hundred. That is more historical accuracy. Mm-hmm. But it's, I think it came out in the '70s. And it was like it's not the greatest movie in the world. <laughs> right. So it's, and that, and that's the thing too. So again, there's always that thing about yeah, you can tell. You know, historically accurate, but is it entertaining? Because you got again, you got to understand the role of what these. Now, again, if you're a documentarian, they said, "Look, I want to do a documentary, factually based. I want to put it on Netflix. I want to put it on YouTube or whatever." And saying, "This is the things that uh, 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 that occurred." That's a that's a different thing. But if you want to talk about bringing Hollywood into it, Hollywood has an agenda of simply getting people to see the film. And if you got to change names or augment some things or make things happen that um uh that weren't there uh yeah i mean that that's that's again it's a different it's a different agenda at that point and we need all of us need to be mindful of that when we go and see these uh films 
But I it's interesting, this idea of, of, of accuracy, though. It's interesting. I've seen this sort of similar point. Now, you're dealing with the historical movies, but I've seen other do- commentaries, for example. I know Neil deGrasse, Ty- Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's done reviews of movies based on their scientific accuracy. Okay. So, like, for example, like Star- he would hate Star Wars because, again, you don't hear explosions in space and things of that nature or, or, or some of the physics of, of how certain uh, things are. But, you know, he's he has noted some movies for their um, for their scientific accuracy. And I know, for example, in the mob area, like there's been like a ton of mob movies over the years. And I've heard like interviews with like former mobsters to say, OK, what, what are the most accurate uh, movies and they would say like the Godfather series wasn't necessarily the most accurate, but like Goodfellas was. They That's say if I you want to say who the most that one or there was a film about Gotti with um I forget the actor it wasn't John Travolta it was another guy, and they said it was pretty accurate went on in there. But but even the Godfather series as great as those films are hailed by people, um even mobsters say a lot of that stuff wasn't quite how things went. Even though and they'll say they even love the Godfather, but when asked what is the most accurate movie about the mob, they'll all go to like something like Goodfellas is, is like the standard when it comes to act, how the mob like really works. Um, you know, so, so again, it's, it's interesting when you have these different groups who look at it from their, um, you know, from their perspective or, you know, from, from being involved in the thing or having an interest in the thing. So how they also approach these films. Fun fact. Um, so, Obviously, everybody knows I'm a dietary chef. So I worked mm-hmm. in a dietary uh, a nursing home uh, in St. Mary's in Scranton, PA, up here. Mm-hmm. After I uh, resigned my position at work, they and they got a, um, a guy named – he was going by the name Irish Man. He was part of the mobs. A uh, big mm-hmm. guy, a hitman guy. Mm-hmm. And he ended up dying in there and all that stuff. And um, they shot a scene with him there. I'm like – Mm-hmm. Get the fuck out of here. Seriously? Like, I was working in there. Like, I don't know if I was there before me or after me. I don't know. He was in there, like, the whole time? Shit. Mm-hmm. I'm like, good thing I didn't tell him I was Greek then. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, I thought I thought it was a kind of cool fact. You know, you know, he worked. You know, he was at that nursery home where I used to work at. He, mm-hmm. You never know when you can meet a mobster, so watch your mouth, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Wow. Yeah. So, anyway, but I wanted um, to uh, go ahead. Finish your saying. Go ahead. I apologize. Um, well, was, actually, I just lost, I just lost my thought. Uh, give me a second. It'll it'll, uh, it'll 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 come back to me in a minute. Um, dang, I just it, it just <laughs> it just let me just it just let me just that it just left me just that fast. Um, um, man. But that, seriously, like about. a lot of these movies we're debating about or have a conversation about, it's it's also a personal opinion too. I have a oh, conversation. Sure. I'm sorry. No, for sure, definitely. Yeah. I have a conversation with historians saying the the history that I know of Greece is completely fucking wrong. I look at them like you're really gonna argue with me that I was born and raised in that. He goes, mm. "Yeah, you're completely wrong." Mm. And we're debating it like for 20, 30 minutes. He goes, "No, it would never happen like this." Yada yada. yada. I'm like, "I oh, know it actually did happen like that, dude." Like it's yeah. And that, and that and that and that is legitimate because you know we also have to understand that even in academia in a lot of different areas when it comes to history there are people who come to different conclusions that's just a fact um, about uh, ancient cultures societies ancient Egypt ancient Greece ancient Rome ancient whatever uh, uh, it is because again you don't have necessarily documentation on these people so how are you going to you know really uh, um, really going to tell the story but now, i i do remember now what i'm what i was uh, saying uh earlier about how again how a film can really change the perception of a person and one film that uh came out not too long ago um that i remember was called the founder i don't know if you saw that movie i heard it was about, it was about ray crock and the you know in mcdonald's yes and, yes you know, i've seen it it was actually a great movie i thought yeah, yeah, but now see that's something that because again I remember I worked in a McDonald's for four years, and Ray Kroc was always presented as this sort of this hero, this this you know you know he made this great company and and he had these values and and all this stuff and he was just this you know uh, 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 paragon of virtue, 
But in that movie, he was a scoundrel. I mean, he basically defrauded those brothers out of arguably hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. And it it was just, you know, he just did not come off as, as a as a credible person after that. So I can I can certainly see why, you know, when it comes to people making these, doc, you know, these um, historical films or whatnot, again, how the perception of someone can change and how it can negatively affect even their brand that they would, you know, uh, would either, you know, file lawsuits and say, hey, you know, this film's, you know, sp- trying to smear me um, or or the, the fam- or the family members of those people. You know, so a lot of times, again, the person might be gone, but the family oftentimes will come after the studio or the director or whatever saying, hey, you know, you're, you're telling, you know, falsehoods about our, our father or grandfather or whoever it was. And then, you know, how far does that how far does that go? Uh, with that, where either they have to, you know, change the film or take things out of it, especially you know, if it hasn't been released yet. Then, you know, um, but the family gets wind of it. They seen like a, a private screening of it and say, look, you know, this is this is stuff that is just not uh, uh, acceptable. But I know the founder is, a, is certainly a case of something where Ray Kroc, who for most of my life until that movie came out, I was thinking, wow, this is a, you know, um, uh, one of those great American success stories. And a lot of, you know, you can't take away from the numbers or the product or whatever, whether you like the food or not, it's not important. I'm just saying the, 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 uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the image, how that image now has changed forever, that this guy was a ruthless businessman who basically defrauded the, the McDonald's brothers out of what should have been a, a much larger share of what they got. I think they got something like a million dollars. Or something. There's nothing really which, about how big the company regular, is. Relatively speaking, that was like not even a cent, uh, like a fraction of a penny that they that they uh, could have gotten from the um, from the uh, you know uh, from that was their brainchild. Again, Ray Kroc didn't create anything. The only all he did was he converted um, the uh, hamburger business into a real estate business. That's that's really how he. Was able to do it, so you know, you, you buy a McDonald's franchise, you're basically buying real estate. The burgers and all that kind of stuff that's kind of secondary when it comes to the holdings. But they're one of the largest real estate holders in the United States, and that's what he did. So, but the whole service, you know, for us, the customer who goes in, I'll have a number one, I'll have this, I'll have that, a boom, boom, boom. They they built that, and 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 so you know, it's like. But it's like you see this all the time when you have people who who wrote stuff. The the, the who is the the guys who wrote Superman, um, Schleicher or whatever, um, um, the, whoever the, the original writer of Superman, uh, mm-hmm. and those guys, all they got at the end of the day from DC was the credits, and that took decades for them to get that. When Superman came out, you didn't even know who these guys were, but. In future uh, releases, they had to put in the credit that they found the original writer of Superman was this guy, or this group. Uh, or it might have been a couple guys, but it was these guys who wrote, you know, and paid homage. But they didn't pay any money. It's not like they got back. Could you imagine if they got all the families of the descendants of those guys got royalty, legacy royalties for all the money that Superman has made over the the, the almost a hundred years. 90 something not like 90 85 86 years you know so if that story ever comes out then again how does that change how does that change the perception of you know dc and and, and all those guys who are in, in, in involved i'll give and you another example i'll give you another example yeah. so they made they made two movies of it two or two different versions the one I actually personally like as a movie, and I feel is more accurate from what you know, been reported. Jobs, um, Steve Jobs, obviously mm-hmm. from you know Apple. Yeah. Uh, the first movie yeah. was in 2013, and yeah. he's shown he's shown this like uh, hippie bum kind of guy at first. Then he became this ruthless business guy who saved his company not once right. but twice. Yeah. The other one is show him more as the inv- innovator that, that he was, but more a soft mm-hmm. kind of guy. Mm-hmm. I think Jobs were more personal opinion. Never met the guy. Um, I felt he was more accurate from the reporter. Like he says, when he w- got something in his head, they were saying, let's say he mm-hmm. got the idea of the iPhone. 
he would not stop to he got mm-hmm. that reality. He, that's how right. passionate he was. I know a couple mm-hmm. of projects has never came off uh, the borderline because they're, they were reality, but they was not going to make any money. It almost made the company bankrupt. That's where right. all the shareholders came in. But you know what I'm trying to go with this is yeah. like it's pretty accurate. But even him, uh, his partner, um, Steve something uh, who started the company. Wozniak. Wozniak. He, he got fucked over big time. Yeah. You know, like yeah. he he's now he's still a, a bill. I mean, he's still a billionaire. He, I mean, he's not he's not he's, he's not hungry. But but I get I, I get it. he was the brains behind Apple though, and that's Absolutely. the thing. I mean, Steve Jobs he leveraged a lot of smart people who were more intelligent than he was. I agree. Wozniak was the brains behind Apple. Period. He was the he was the one building computers in his in his in his um in his uh, garage for fun. Jobs got the idea that hey, you know, we need to make money with this thing. Wozniak just did it just for 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 giggles, you know. That was he was just into that sort of thing. So, and I think Jobs, as far as what you were saying, it was right about him being like a like a taskmaster. It's like, but basically, all he said to his engineers was like, "Look, you got This is what I want. You guys better figure this out. If you want your shares, if you want your whatever, if you want to still work here, you guys better figure this out." So it wasn't like he was in the design lab saying. You know, this is how we going to do it. Mm-hmm. No, all the work was done by the people who work for him. And he was just the, he was the, the pitch guy. I mean, you know, he he branded his look. Even the guy who came after him, uh, Cook, does the same thing. There's the blue jeans on and the black shirt uh, and, and it was the turtleneck uh, uh, thing. And they just model this thing. And he the, but Jobs has always been a pitch man. That's it. That's been his main claim to fame. He can yeah, go into a room. He, he was good at it. Exactly. And 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 look, and I and I admit that, especially when you're a bit, you need that. You need your advertising. You need your marketing guys. You need the guys who are going to actually go out there and do the retail, uh, door to door sales, or whatever. Make those cold calls and 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 get the business. You know, any think about a radio station or a television station. How how many calls you're looking for advertisers and and um you know people to sponsor programming that's really the, the 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 work i mean the creative it's important but unless you have those people it doesn't it doesn't fly so so again who are the real heroes of apple you know everyone's going to say it's steve jobs no well. but you can point to a lot of other people who were just as responsible Wozniak being the one until he left and he wasn't really part of the iphone um uh era you know, he was in the early part when they had the you know the Mac 2e and the Macintosh early Mac computers and stuff like that, but but again those engineers who basically had to work nonstop just like the guys now working for Tesla. I mean you know is is uh, the Tesla guy is he that brilliant? I don't know, but he he pushed those guys at Tesla to say look you guys got to make some certain certain things happen, and um, you know that that's. But again, how that story is going to be told is going to be is going to be interesting. But the most pressing thing I saw was there was a sixty minute interview on Jobs that I thought was probably the most accurate um, portrayal of Jobs. If you look up sixty minutes on Steve Jobs, I think that that was a pretty uh, an insightful uh, look into the guy, who he was and who he wasn't, and what drove him, and ultimately, again, who are the people who are ultimately responsible for. Um, for the success of Apple, because there were, in a lot of respects, he was off. The guy wouldn't shower. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he would like the, he just he went on hippie. these, uh, you know, and he went on a lot of spiritual highs, getting on the, you know, getting on the the herbs or whatever. So he was, yeah. You I know, think he, when he got he, cancer, he, he didn't get even chemo. I'm not mistaken, because he had the same cancer my mom has, Colin. Mm, mm. So from but yeah, from he tried to do that. I guess he tried to do the homeopathic or the the natural Ayurvedic medicine sort of route to try to you know, rather than going the traditional chemo route or whatever. But again, even with that, you know, business interests oftentimes don't necessarily warrant that because it's like, oh, a Joss has cancer. Could you imagine what would happen if that came out early enough? What would happen to Apple stock at the time? Oh, it crashed completely. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I also heard when he was not at work, when he was just being not CEO job, and when he was a job as the just plain Steve Jobs, like me and you are right now, mm-hmm. he was very humble outside Apple. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. 
Then, but only only thing he was humble with money because he even said it every week he had a new car because he didn't want people to know his license plate. So doesn't go about any extreme, but whatever. Um, right. Again. Yeah, but yeah, but movies about movies about people, I think, are always the hardest to make. I agree. Because again, there's there's so many different sides or facets of a person that some people may see and some don't. You know. So, like, for example, I just saw the last uh, biographical movie I saw. It was uh, the Bob Marley movie, One Love. I saw that uh, last month. And I thought, again, it, but I already went in knowing, like, the, the family produced the movie. Now, this guy's got, like, 13 kids by nine different women. Okay. But the movie itself was, like, a love story between him and his, I guess, his first wife um, uh, uh, in the film. I, for, I forget her name. But, um, but it was, like, a love story between them. And yes, it was alluded to that he was doing some stuff, but when you got nine women and thirteen kids, it was a lot more God damn. than that than what they look, took in the film. But again, his kids were produced in the film, so they knew that there was certain aspects that they weren't going to dwell on. Everything was kind of in the shadows. The woman he was with was kind of like in the shadows, in the back, like you barely. Should. She didn't even have a speaking role in the film, and that was only just one of the women he he got, you know. Uh, had had kids with so 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 yeah it was you know there was just a lot of things that you knew i already knew that the movie wasn't going to please a lot of people for a lot of reasons one it wasn't played by a uh a jamaican guy that you no know, that was going to get people two people were worrying about the accent you know and again that's something i'm i'm um a bit you know uh uh, uh tone deaf to because i can i can hear you know when I hear British accent or German accent or Russian accent or Greek accent or whatever, I'm just thinking, I, I'm just thinking, okay, that's the accent. But if you ask the people, like, I don't know if it's happened with you, Peter, where a, a movie that portrayed a Greek person and the, the accent was so bad, you were just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they, they cast this guy to play a Greek. That's the oh, worst I, accent I ever heard uh, Great example. My, figure, my fact, Greg Wedding, the guy who play, uh, who sings in sync, they brought him uh-huh. in as a Greek guy. And he had no Greek culture in him, no Greek nothing. And he's mm. more Italian than anything. He has nothing about Greek. He knows about mm. the culture. I'm like, okay, mm. this is slapping my face. Uh, but yeah. the woman who is the main character, she's Greek. I'm not sure if she's 100%, but I know she's at least 50%. And she was like, when she was doing the movie, she was wondering, like, uh, they want to do a big sex scene. She fought that tooth and nail. I'm not doing the movie, the sex scene. My priest is gonna watch this. She goes. My father's gonna see. It. My mother's gonna watch this. My freaking kids are gonna watch this eventually. My grandkids are gonna watch this eventually. No. Mm. So they came. They came. Made halfway. Can you at least lay in bed? With now, where did you? Now, were you offended by? Now, I thought someone who kind of stole that movie was the mom. So Lazine was that Lazine Kazan. She, I guess, she was. She played the mother in the film. Mm-hmm. She's not Greek at all. She's uh, Sephardic Jew, uh, Ashkenazi Jewish. and Sephardic Jewish with Russian and Turkish roots. Yeah. So I don't know um, if that counts as Greek or not. But she was such no. a dominant. She was a dominant figure in the film. And I don't know how many other people in the film that you thought were like, hey, these aren't even Greek people playing a character. Did that? Did that so take her, away from it? For uh, actually, that? before I looked it up, before the whole internet boom thing came out, before Google it wasn't a thing. You didn't know anything. You, you find out through magazines and stuff like that who was Greek or not. Um, at the time, I didn't didn't know she was a Greek. So she could play a very good Greek woman. She mm-hmm. fooled me very well. Now that I know she's not Greek, am I offended? No, I'm not. Because she did it respectfully. She play is an act. She has a job to do in the day. She was hired for a job, and I understand mm-hmm. that. Right. Now, the father, I know he was, he was 100% Greek. I had no problem with that. I know, I, right. I know, I know. In being reality, let's be realistic for a second here in Hollywood, and we're gonna end it here soon. Um, yep. It's how many Greek actors out there? There are not that many. So to get that many Greek actors under one camera, good luck with it. It's not a lot. Yeah. So I knew not something I'm not gonna be Greek. Like mm. okay, so one Greek actor they could have brought in, but. I think his ego is way too big for himself. Is the guy who played in Full House, uh, who played Uncle Jesse. He's he's Greek. Oh, is he? Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, uh, uh, oh, geez, so, so What's it? Uh, here, oh, I look up for you right now. Give me one second. Yeah, I know you're talking about though. 
I think his ego is a little bit too big for yeah, his Stamos. Head. John Stamos. John Stamos. Stamos. Not, yeah. is it Stamos or Stamos? Uh, Stamos. Stamos. Yes. Um, I never met the guy personally, but from mm -hmm. what interviews I've seen, his ego is way too big for his own hair. <laughs> um, but he forgets. Would you he, say is the most popular Greek actor? Um, a Greek that, American that actor or a Greek friend? actor in Greece? Um, if they've had success in the U.S., um, then, 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 you know, that, that also, it could be a Greek actor from Greece, but it has been in American films. It doesn't have to necessarily be a Greek American, but in terms of like who, who kind of is state is Stamos is, does he come off as the guy, um, um, that, you know, uh, that, uh, people resonate with, uh, the most, or is there, there's someone else? Number one Male or actor, female. it comes to my head right now off the bat without me blinking. It's probably a female. It's a, a Jennifer. 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 Come on. What's her fucking last name? Oh God. She plays in Friends. Oh shit. Um. Jennifer. Aniston. Something like that. And it's, oh, she's Greek. Oh yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, she's Greek. Jennifer uh, Aniston is Greek. Yeah, I'm not sure what percentage it is, but she's at least I know I know for a fact she's at least fifty percent, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. But I know she's definitely great. That's I can give you all that for sure because I've seen her. The other mm -hmm. one that comes to my mind personally, closing my eyes, like okay, another Greek, um, Trish Stratus. She's a Greek. Uh, I know technically she's Canadian, can Canadian, but she's another one. But her, yeah. But what about what about now? Off the top of my head, when I think of Greek actor, just the person that really, and yeah, I'm showing my age here, but uh, Telly Savalas, right? Kojak. Bald head. He was a shout out to Telly Savalas. He was a member of the Seven B Network. Salute. He was one of the, the original Ball Brothers. He had the lollipop. Who loves you, baby? In in in, in yeah, the he series. passed away. Oh, no, was it? You ever watch Kojak? No, I didn't. Oh but... man, see, look, so you're not a, so you're not a real Greek if you don't go watch Kojak. He was back, in, especially in the seventies. When, like you said, there haven't been a ton of Greek actors and actresses. So, but he was a prime time. I mean, when back in the seventies, when cop shows were like the thing, he had for for years this top cop show, Kojak. And he, you know, so you gotta you gotta go back and watch some of those uh uh, uh that 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 series from from the um uh, from the seventies. But yeah, he he was definitely a very memorable character. Yeah, he may have been a cop cool. Yeah, that's no. what I'm saying. He was, yeah, he had swag. He sucked on Wally Pops because he was trying to give up cigarettes. So he went to, so he was back on. in the, yeah, grooming. Back in the 70s, contrary to what you see today, we didn't necessarily hate the cops, you know. Yeah, it, you know, it, it was just. No, not cop, no, cop, cop TV. Yeah, yeah, pop TV. Yeah, the sixties. Adam, listen, Adam twelve. Uh, one, Adam, one Adam twelve. Yeah, the rookies. Um, you know, Hill Street Blues uh, or or, or it was a little um, sitcom. Uh, yeah, what's a little sitcom? You come on, what's it? Uh, man, what's that sitcom? Oh, uh, I'm gonna have to look it up. Not a little sitcom. Cool. Come on, with the oh, black Barney dude, Miller. With the black guy. Barney yeah, Miller. Barney Miller. Barney Miller. Yeah, Barney yeah. Miller. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I mean, that definitely um, the, the the image and perception was 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 definitely different back then. But Kojak was a standout in terms of of um, you know, and again, just his name, Telly Savalas. That was even that mm -hmm. was cool. You know, what I mean, he, he. But but yeah, Trey's right. He was like the coolest cop on TV. So you owe it to yourself to go back and ask your ask your mom. Does she know Telly Savalas, or has she watched any of his uh? Uh, 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 of his stuff. Um, yeah, I'm actually. Look, I looked it up right now. Um, and from the you know the clips I'm looking at, like, like it, it looks like he had a very, very good career because I'm seeing his bio, the movies he made. Very, yeah, he was very, a Bond. He was a Bond villain. He was in um yeah. on Her Majesty's Secret Service. He was um. He's uh, a dirty well, dozen too. He, yeah, dirty, dirty dozen. dozen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he died young. He only died at uh, age seventy-two, uh, ninety-four. Yeah, but he smoked like a ridiculous. I mean, the like lollipop thing was a thing on the show, but he smoked like a yeah. He was like one of them chain smoker guys. But bro, uh, 
I, I can tell. Are you want chain smokers? I know chain smokers. I know people go up to three packs a day. Yeah. So anyway, top of an hour, guys. Uh, final thoughts, Paul. This was fun. My man, you're up again. First. Uh, historically op- uh, accurate movies. Um, they're few and far between, but the ones that are able to nail it and get it right and keep it entertaining, they're gems. So again, for me, Apollo 13, uh, Oppenheimer, um, you know, very, very good films that tell a very accurate, um, uh, uh, story. Uh, but again, um, I understand, like I said, I'm able to separate. I understand when I'm trying to be entertained versus someone trying to get the historical narrative correct. And some movies, like I said, like Dragon, Bruce Lee story, uh, not always the most accurate in terms of the portrayal, but you can still tell a good story. Okay, so again, you can say based on real events or based on a true story. And as soon as I see that little title, I already there's something in my mind that is going to disconnect a little bit. It's in the back of my mind. It's going to say, "Okay, I need to probably do some research on this person or this period afterwards or whatever, so I can have a greater appreciation for the history of it." But I can still certainly be entertained by the product. So it's not a deal breaker for me if it's not the most historically accurate. Uh, hidden, uh, hidden figures, like I said, is a, is another or Red Tails. Again, um, a lot of that stuff we just don't have any knowledge of, but. I think they're still important films because they shed light on somebody whose story at, at least in some part needed to be told. Bruce Lee's story needed to be told because again, here's a guy who arguably, could you imagine if he would live even five more years or 10 more years, the impact he would have had not only on Asian cinema, but on American cinema, yeah. if he lived to 40, like what he could have done that he would have been Arnold Schwarzenegger before Arnold Schwarzenegger. Or you, know you saying? see, yeah. he, Bruce you know, Lee would have opened up the world. He would have opened exactly. up the world for real. He exactly. Was a good guy. He was, yeah. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, in fact, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about that. You know, tomorrow. I, think I was actually look, I'm looking at the schedule. I mean, you're yeah, talking about, about martial Lee. arts, so we'll 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 delve into a little bit of that tomorrow. Yeah. Um. So but, as you're uh, talking, but, dude, I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm looking at the schedule yeah. right now on my other screen. I'm going, ooh, martial arts. I'm getting excited just looking at it. And VMU yeah. has a great picture of. Uh, it was called a thumbnail on it. I'm like, oh man, yeah. he, he did a good job on this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. Uh, uh, definitely looking forward to that conversation tomorrow. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, you know, so, so um, at the end of the day, again, are you entertained? And, but at the same time, you owe it to yourself to do the research and to be informed. And I think certainly with, the, you know, a lot of people today, they just want to take, they get their news, they get their media from so many different places or whatnot, but nobody really wants to, you know, uh, do the work to at least find, you know, um, and, and find counters. Like I find, especially when it comes to historical information, the best thing for me is when I see a debate, like a real debate mm-hmm. between historians. I think there's plenty of that on YouTube when it comes to certain things in terms of, again, you can have all the facts and the data, but the conclusions can differ. And I love seeing people go at it um this you know discussing those conclusions i think you know i think i'm I'm edified by those type of conversations so again don't rely on a movie to give you the facts do your own um uh, uh search uh, uh to get the truth on that but at the same time you can still enjoy the film at least what the film w- w- was trying to do they gave you something that was certainly worth your two hours or whatever and i, I don't i don't i don't see anything um i don't see anything wrong with that but please don't rely on any film to to be your you know the 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 final arbiter of truth when it comes to uh, history or to people or what have you. It's a lot more complex than that, and we may not ever get some of the answers to these questions. But again, but don't be so sold on uh, something you see on in a movie or on TV that you just you know you just take that as gospel. So that that's all I got. All right, Dre, you're up, man. I mean, I ain't got, you know, I, I don't know, man. You know, it, it's a great topic in reference to the history of mute movies and documentaries to just the accuracy, uh, the embellishment. You know, I, I think, you know, living in America, you see things sometimes through all lenses sometimes. At least I, you try to for the most part, you know, when you see it 
Uh, you hear about stories, whether you're hearing it from family, friends, on the streets, in the news, how we do it now, social media, wherever, platform. You know, and then when it comes to life in the movie, you know, it just makes you think about stuff, bring stuff into perspective, you know. Some truths, you know, they're going to be imbalanced, especially if there's documented truth and it's a hero involved. To make America look good, there's always going to be a hero. You know, uh, but, you know, just make sure your documentation is correct. I think for the most part, when they do uh, put movies on a large screen, I think they've already done the history work and passed those things to the government anyway to be able to, especially through Hollywood. Hollywood and the government, they work together. So you ain't going to get no grand documentary about military facts and just political facts just to be doing it you know for the most part they're going to cover their x's and o's with that now you may have to get some royalties just based off the family name and how they patent their name and stuff but you know that's why you can see a whole lot of different little movies and stuff like that from different points of views but a lot of american history as it comes to just i don't know the social aspect most of that is true now the inside story can be just made up like if you talking about, you know, Kennedy, even his story of his life and with his wife and kids and all of that. That's, you know, some of us firsthand accounts through videos and stuff like that. But that's the greatness of being, you know, making movies, man. It's your, a little bit of your imagination, a little bit of truth, a little bit of lie, a little bit of um, uncertainty, a little bit of of fantasy it's a little bit of it all man just how you look at it from what perspective you're looking at it and shoot i think of america and this is my last thing if i think of america would invest in its uh stem programs and videography and cinematics and things like that man i think america should no telling what could be coming into the future man yeah you know just the way the stream yards and things like that are involved and i think if they push that to the younger generation how to start building the programs from the inside america be would be the greatest country but right now these movies they say ain't doing nothing but distracting the, the poor people that's all that's all i got so guys my take on it like paul said do your history i mean Trey, do your homework Paul said the same thing. You know, keep it open mind. Go really the grain of salt in a way. It's a movie. It's not going to be based completely accurate. As much I hate Alexander the Great, I didn't hate it because it wasn't accurate. I hate it because the acting was horrible. Didn't like the movie. There are other movies that are not accurate at all, and I think they're great movies. Again, it's a movie. Now, if you want to get down to Neeping Greamy, go f- watch the documentary. That's where the details go open up and learn more about it. Except yeah. that. Uh Schedule check. This week, tomorrow, this is the one I am being dying for. We are talking about martial arts on the gray area. Me and Paul, we're going to kill that one. And we're going to have fun with that one. On Wednesday, by the way, guys, I changed the Wednesday time from 9 o'clock to 9.30. Gives everybody a chance to get off a BMU channel and come to mine. It gives a nice half hour. You just want to keep me working, man. Hey, I said, I'm fifty. I I'm, I said, I, I, I'm fifty percent on or with you. So I'm 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 hundred percent on the gray area and your Saturday night show. That one I'm fifty fifty. So don't you know? I didn't say you, did I? Know? Uh, I'll let you know, but I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not fully committed to that one yet. I like free labor. But what's your topic though? Oh, you're gonna love this one, uh, Trey. You're gonna like this. And wife, if you're free, please let me know. I'll email you tomorrow or tomorrow tomorrow or Monday about it. The topic is, why do men never change? That's a loaded, that's a loaded uh, title, man. Oh, yeah. True. That sounds like, that yeah. sounds like some clout chasing right there, man. What's up, Trey? I, I, I'm yeah. sorry, you were broken up there. No, I said, grooming be coming with cannons, just loading up the whole oh, cannon. Oh, I love doing this. Shipping, it's like... Yeah. All right, already, uh, my buddy Sam, if he, he, by the way, guys, Sam will be out for a little bit. He has COVID. Hopefully he's good by Wednesday. Feel better, man. Yeah. Uh, so if he's back, he he's already yeah, arguing with me in you know, the back chat. You know all that stuff. Like, man, do change. I'm like, hang up. Hold your ammo on Wednesday. 
then you can have your debate in in an arena. Anything goes. After the arena, we leave. We're all friends again. Similar mm. as a barbershop. We might argue mm. in a barbershop. We're friends afterwards. So, and I'm not sure on sat- next Saturday if I'm going to do this. I'm still debating. I want to see if Kelly comes in or not. I want to do a show on Mr. Impossible versus James Bond. That That's going to be a good debate one. If I can get Kelly on because he's already yelling at me at work about it. I'm like, well, both are good in own way. Well, Kelly... Take it down. You're on a 10, and you need to get to on a 3 with me. We're at work, dude. <laughs> but except that, guys. This was, once again, Grooming and Reviews. I am Ghost of Sparta. As always, stay fresh, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.